misfortunes that were to become the main object of the first Hey, Reality, what's up? Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. It's been a while since we've casted together. Back in the Diamond T League days, I think. Oh, yeah? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't remember if it was that or, like, RSL. I didn't cast RSL, I don't think. I only played. We did the group pick thing, I think. We did. Two. Okay, yeah. Season no, that's two, true. the one that still isn't finished. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> 
Thanks, Eternal. Very cool. Um, all right, you you ready to do this thing? I'm so ready. It's a bang over group. Okay. Oh, he's he's hit both of us as referees. That is not fun. All right, so we're uh, heading into Gypsy Danger versus Psystorm for our first match. Um, spawning in on Glittering Ashes. TVP, Gypsy Danger known for having amazing TVP, but Psystorm known for having amazing PVT. So I'm actually really excited for this one. As we have spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Glittering Ashes, he is hailing from Genesis Gaming. He is Gypsy Danger. And in the top right... From Cryptic EU at Psystorm. I love Cryptic's little Grim Reaper thing. They updated it. It never used to have the uh, the little smiling face inside. Yeah, it's cute. I like it. The tongue is a nice touch. Yeah. Matches the eyes close enough. <clears throat> so already starting off this game, we see a little bit of a variation from Gypsy Danger. Rax is not in the main base, but it's also not towards his opponent's base. He has fake proxied his Rax at his third base. So, uh, obviously just doing a little bit of mind games here. Let's see if Psystorm overreacts, which is what Gypsy Danger is looking for, or if he's a little bit too smart for this kind of tricky play. Who's putting a second depot as well? Okay, so maybe a factory expand kind of opener. Putting your see where he takes this outside your base like this it always reminds me of like those really dumb like tiktok or youtube prank videos yeah like, we're, we're gonna put a bucket of water on this door and they're gonna be so confused and the guy walks through <laughs> and then he doesn't trip the wire it's like set up wrong but they still <laughs> uploaded it anyway that's what like putting your first racks outside your base is to me i feel like like protoss almost never overreact to this anymore it worked like yep. the first four times anybody ever did it and look how calm Psystorm's being he still took his second nexus yeah just doing normal Protoss things he is going to start a zealot so that is kind of what gypsy danger is looking for at the minimum uh just and that's just Psystorm respecting as he should the possibility of a really fast reaper but as we know it's not going to be necessary this game and um Probe just looking around for the fake proxy, not actually going to find it. Um, so it's going to come down to the Probe and Zealot Micro on the other side of the map, but so far, it's still a pretty even game. This is the last seen. group stage. This is sad. Yeah, this is the last one for this season is... Uh, we're wrapping up the group stage two for this championship. Already had some amazing games. Uh, group B, of course, was an absolute meme. We were casting that uh, yesterday <laughs> for like five hours. <laughs> it's okay, uh, guys. We PvP. only have three PVPs today, potentially. <laughs> Maybe two if we're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like it's going to be um, just a mind drop follow up here for Gypsy Danger. Uh, interesting. Oh, Zealot's going to get caught. I would say so far this is going pretty well for Gypsy Danger. I mean, Psystorm is mostly in the dark here. Um, the Reaper uh, did get one probe kill, so that's kind of what you're. I mean, he's looking for maybe two or three, but getting the Zelda as well with the mine and then completely denying any of Psystorm scouting, as well as forcing the Zealot, you know, Psystorm is kind of playing a little bit safe here since he doesn't know what he's up against. He's got a battery in the natural, he's building uh, Observer and Blink before starting a Robo Bay, so. Uh, oh, actually, it looks like he's going for a four gate Blink. Okay. So. Hmm. Interesting. Guys, please let me know if reality is okay as well. We're, uh, we're peeking 
in the mid-yellow, so it should all be good, but I can never be quite sure. Yeah, and I can bring my mic closer if, if I'm too quiet or, or anything like For that. For some but... ASMR action, is that, is that what we're doing? Uh, we'll save that for the PvP, just to have filler content. <laughs> Everybody's sitting sure. back on three bases and spamming zealots. Uh, <laughs> Our red Protoss is researching Blink. Mm -hmm. nope. <laughs> Sending the prism across the map. Widowmind drop doesn't really get anything done. Uh, behind this, Gypsy Danger is going for tanks. That's good. I want tanks for four gate Blink. Yeah, uh, all comes down to tank positioning. I've yeah. seen some really bad tank positioning before, but Gypsy should be on top of this. Ooh, 12 probes go down the main base. It's a little bit of mind drop. Rip. Okay, that well, is... Yeah. It happens. Sidestorm <laughs> is all in now. Um, <laughs> he, he was semi-all in before, but he is extremely all in now. He is down six oh, workers. Yeah. Um, Plus meals. Yeah, and this Raven's actually going to catch that Observer as well, which is going to make this a lot harder without having that information on where the tanks are. You don't really know what's a good spot to blink into, and Psystorm, with EU ping, I, I'm not a believer in this all in, but I've seen crazier things happen with, with Stalkers and Prisms, so I almost want to believe, and actually Gypsy Danger is unseaging and moving out right now, and just as he moves out, the Stalkers blink into the main base. Stim is going to go down. Gypsy Danger is on full panic mode right now. All three tanks coming in towards the main base. If he blinks forward, he is going to be able to pick off the tanks, but he has just not enough Stalkers to get the one shot off. And this Prism is going to end up going down to the Viking. The Stalkers all getting a little bit derped around. Okay, he kind of gets out, but that was not enough damage. Sniping Stim is really nice, but now Gypsy Danger knows that he needs to sit back. And with three tanks already out and more on the way, I don't think that there's going to be a lot of openings here for Psystorm. As once again, we don't quite have enough Stalkers to one shot, so he has to stay a little bit extra to finish off that tank, causing him to lose another two or three Stalkers. Akron saying you're not okay. Are you okay, Reality? Are you okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god. I'm glad that Acheron is concerned, though. This just got real dark. What? <laughs> I'm just being real with you, okay? Uh-huh. It's in my name. <clears throat> okay, and these two... Yeah. So he, he's improved his tank positioning already. The two tanks are a lot further back now, so it's going to be a lot, much more committed Lincoln if he wants to pick those off. Or Psy Storm. And yeah, he now feels comfortable enough to move out, does Gypsy Danger, and... Oh! He is going to lose that... Oh no, the hot pickup from the medevac. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just going to be Stalker Zealot against this bio tank force, and I'm not... Without the splash damage, I'm not a believer. This, there's not enough gateway units, and there's not any disruptors, there's not any Colossus. I don't think there's really a way for Psystorm to hold this push. I mean, I've seen battery overcharge pull off a lot, but this is, I mean, this is a lot of weight for the battery overcharge to carry. Next, it's not even done yet. I do like this tank position from Gypsy Danger as well, like, just kind of having those rocks there to, to protect them from getting uh, from the zealots getting very much surface area. Yeah, but attacking high ground is really hard. It is. He does have Medivacs really and hard. Raven. Unless and your the... opponent walks under your siege tank line six times <laughs> with an armor shred. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the force shield was good. He, he trapped the bio units, but once again, there's not enough zealot stalker to clear it out. And Gypsy Danger takes the first game looking very strong. We are going to moving over to NA for game number two. Um, that is going to be... Mm, what map is that? They posted it in... 
Yeah, so that's gonna be Curious Minds. Good Terran map. So tell us a little bit about these players' reality. So, Gypsy Danger was not, he wasn't having the greatest results for most of this year. And then basically like the last, the last chance tournament, he just didn't lose to Protoss at all and made it very far until eventually losing to Fiant. And then he showed a similar level of dominance through the uh, season finals for last chance until he was actually stopped by, I believe it was Psystorm because I think Gypsy Danger had like a 14 and zero win streak against Protoss in Legion Cup and then finally lost to Psystorm. There's actually some history with these two players. Uh, Psystorm on the other hand, um, he was knocked out by a very powerful Protoss player in, um, in the first season. Uh, but then he won two in a row after that. Looked very dominant in pretty much every matchup. Um, but more recently, we've seen him kind of falter here and there. And uh, the one matchup that has stayed true for him is that he's very strong in PBT, uh, pushing up a tree to the limit, uh, taking down Gypsy Danger. And, uh, Lucas Dart, I think he also beat in the season final. So. <clears throat> There's a lot to there's a lot of comments to give out for Psystorm's PVT, but I think for this group, your PvP is what's gonna have to be on point to make it out. We have Den Yellow and Laser Cat uh for the second match and both of those guys are absolute PvP monsters, so Well, this is a good group to be a PvP monster in. Not the best group to be a PvP monster in, but a good It's group. the second best group. Yeah. It's yeah. the mid group. Right, so it is going to be uh, Gypsy Danger's pick, but Psystorm's server for this one. So we'll see how that changes, how this uh, how this shapes out. I we didn't quite catch what happened with that mind drop, but I assume it was just Psystorm not looking, uh, and I think that was the main thing that that caused him to lose that game. So. We are in game number two. We have up a map representing Genesis Gaming or GYDR and on a name. We have the purple Terran, Gypsy Danger. And in the bottom right, as our blue toss from Cryptic and Psy Storm. Do we know what GYDR stands for? Gator. Do we have any? I don't know. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> well, ask the man himself. You know he's uh... not tabbed into this game. <laughs> Oh! Oh, I got, I got served. <laughs> I cast or cursed my own play. Oh, I'm in all chat. No! <laughs> well... <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, a uh, classic mistake. <laughs> um, we actually... Oh, man. I was watching Wardy the other day, and he made a similar mistake, where uh, Naruto in Observer Chat asked him to... Um, asked him to, like, 
list of food or something, like his favorite food. Or he said hamburger, but then he just put hamburger in all chat. It was like during a WTL match or something. Yeah. <laughs> Rainer just like typed in shut the hell up, Wardy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was very funny. <laughs> it's always tickled me a little bit that like Naruto just kept his ID. Like, could you imagine yeah. if everybody just kept the ID they made when they were thirteen? It would be it would be mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you have some people that that do that, and and it already is a little bit of mayhem. We have people like Slayer that play StarCraft two in twenty twenty two. But but that's under like that ID. That's like valid in the StarCraft. Right? Like it's one word. It's true. That that denotes a profession. Like that's a, that's a thing. Like hero or or boxer. That is fair. Naruto my, is just copyright infringement. <laughs> my full ID was Renegade X Slayer. So we there you go. We kind of were related, but yeah. And then Slayer took away the, the second half of that name from you. You stole it. My IDs used to be Renegade X Slayer and Renegade Exorcist, which I thought was very clever when I was 15. <laughs> but <laughs> I have seen less clever things. We'll put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. For use of names, at least. I mean, mine is just I knew about the Terran Player fantasy, and I was like, well, I leave games too early sometimes so i'm the opposite of fantasy so reality bam and then i figured out later that reality was also a pro gamer so that very unclever uh <laughs> so Cystorm's he... going into phoenix but yeah just two only two phoenix so it's like these guys are not for harassment only tank lifts yeah the two phoenixes is I haven't actually seen something like this before. I, yeah, I guess you could. It's like not a thing, but. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose like if they're doing, just a... okay. There's a third phoenix. Okay, so he was just uh, cutting gas for uh, a Robo Bay, an observer. It looks like okay. So the phoenixes versus the Raven opener is a pretty good matchup for the Protoss here. Uh, phoenixes do extra damage against light. Ravens are light. Very easy to snipe that and. Too much gas goes down the drain for the Terran, and the Phoenixes have utility earlier. Just it's a very good situation for the Protoss. Um, I don't even really see. I mean, Chip's dangerous and hiding it in the corner of the map. Sometimes you'll see the Terrans try and sneak it out, get to the top right or the bottom left, but we don't see that. So likelihood is that the Raven gets sniped, but we'll have to. See. It'll come down to positioning. Yeah, there it is. So this is already shaping up much better for Psystorm, just based on the opener. Um, no, real, no real harassment coming out from G Gypsy Danger this game, and Raven going down is really good position for Psystorm. Uh, third base is coming down kind of late though, It's looks like it's going to go down around 5.30 once he's done harassing with the Phoenix. There's almost a free tank he can grab, I don't think he's caught on to it yet though. Yeah, the bunker's empty, but I don't think he uh, noticed Even that. now, there's only two marines. Like, he can totally... Um... Yeah. He's going to go for the marines instead, which is not a bad call. I mean, they were kind of split up, and there wasn't enough of them there. His, his phoenixes are actually completely out of control. He's going to grab the medevac as well, and... That is some, a massive mistake from Gypsy Danger. Uh, not having those marines together to push back the phoenixes. See... He's actually just going to move out right now. My whole thing here is this Phoenix play is very good, but what if he had just gone for Phoenix initially, right? This could have hit like yeah. 40 seconds earlier and you see how much damage it's doing now. It would have been like at least double the damage if it had hit that early. It definitely could have been. Um, I do think he, this is a bit of a safer variation though, because you, as you can see, because he got that earlier Robo Bay, he now has two Colossus out already. So I think he's actually... I think I prefer it in this game in particular because Gypsy Danger is going for a really fast push. Uh, no third CC on the way, uh, no no upgrades, follow up, so it's actually quite all in. The SCV's fold as well, so uh, the safer variation on the Phoenix Colossus is actually working out very well for Psystorm. And as the Phoenix has come in to lift the tanks, I think it's going to commit into this, and I feel like this is the hold Renegade. Yeah. It's certainly looking that way. Like, 
yes, Sidestorm is trading with Gypsy right now. Yes, he's losing some things, but look how much of a gap Gypsy still needs to close to even get to the ramp. And this is not the easiest map to uh, the two base all in on. Like, your opponent has free high grounds. This is very easily... E very easy to wall, very easy to get up a secondary layer of defense, very cramped. There's not enough room for you to like maneuver behind the mineral line or anything without getting absolutely shredded by the Colossi. So Gypsy Danger has so much work ahead of him. My one critique of Psystorm here is just like he didn't have a second shield battery yet and he's fixed that problem. So yeah. And he's comfortable to just give up the gateways, let the tank shell away for now. Time is on his side. He's up quite a bit in workers here, which you're expected to be with Protoss, but 10 workers is considered to be an economic advantage for the Protoss in this uh, in this scenario, especially with some of the SCVs pulled across the map. Um, and I think once he gets charge here, which just completed, he should just push down. He doesn't want these bunkers to get up. Uh, Phoenixes are going to pick off a Liberator on the reinforcement, but he loses two of them. Three go down. Okay. That's, that's Something a... going in Gypsy in his favor. That's a big blunder from Psystorm. Like, he could have done the same maneuver, camping the reinforcement line farther back, like closer to Jimmy yeah. Danger's base, or even gone and killed a bunch of SCDs, and it would have achieved the same result. But, like, again, this is a really hard map to push into your opponent's natural, and he held anyway, despite the losses. So he's going to yeah. win, just maybe not as hard as he could have. <laughs> right. If he still had those phoenixes alive, he could chase down and kill all of these marauders and medevacs. There's no marines here to shoot the phoenixes. Um, but as it is, still in a fantastic position. There's a third base now coming down. So nine minute third base here from Sidestorm, playing it very safe. Um, but like I was mentioning, with the charge finishing, there wasn't really a lot of staying power for Gypsy Danger on that push, especially with the bunkers not yet complete. Um, he does have a much faster third than Sidestorm, but I can't imagine that Sidestorm will just let this third get up, especially since he scattered it with his phoenixes. He should have an army advantage here uh, as Gypsy Danger tries to land that third base, so I would not be surprised if we saw a big attack coming in, maybe with plus one or prism. And as I'm done saying that, he moves out with the Colossus and the Warp Prism. Okay. Look at that. We Protoss players all think alike. Narcon warping in. Um, I, I don't know if he has enough to actually kill Gypsy Danger. Well, I mean, with the Archons, he will help have a tech advantage on top of the army advantage. He's also gonna have. Well, he's gonna go in before plus one. The Phoenixes lift up the tanks. Some of them die, but they relift them as soon as they can. And it looks like. Yeah, so. Uh, Sidestorm's able to break past this tank line. There's just Bio and a couple of Vikings left over that. Uh, Archon shred the SCVs, and GG is called. Nice micro. Yeah, that was a very well taken fight. Um. Gypsy Danger didn't really have enough time to set up depot walls and. And, uh. An engineer engineering base to to tank for the Colossus, so very straightforward fight from Psystorm. No missile turrets either for the Phoenixes. We're going to get an ace match for our first series of the day, so that's exciting and glad that this one is going all the way, although uh, I wasn't expecting long games from these two, but I was hoping for them. Uh, so Maybe this is the one. Maybe this is the 35-minute game. It could be. I mean, Hardwire is, Hardwire is a good late game map. Four bases is quite defendable for either mm -hmm. side, so. He, he did give you uh, referee instead of me this time. 
I would like to point that out. Very powerful. <laughs> All right. Here we have spawning in the top right hand side of Hardwire LE. Hailing from Genesis Gaming and having not the not the cleanest game last game, but uh, looking to bring it back, we have Gypsy Danger. And in the bottom left as the red Protoss, Cryptic, Psy Storm. No cannon rush from Psystorm, so not really using the map to its full potential. Um, not going to say I'm surprised, but I was still hoping against hope that we might see something cheeky. But alas, standard macro player will play standard macro. Wait, I've um, actually, I've never seen this before. The cleaning bots are together. Hmm. <laughs> That is, I think that is glitched some out, right? Because it's supposed to be one behind the mineral line and then one in front of the in front of the I, The cleaning bots annoy me more than anything else, so I haven't actually like taken time to figure out where they spawn or any of that. But uh I yeah, now that you mention it, I don't feel like I often see them right next to each other. Gypsy hmm. has a really sus SCV out on the map. Okay, but Psystorm has gone 17 Nexus this game, and it looks like he's going to proxy a pylon. He's going to put a gateway, and he's going to get a fast warp gate. Psystorm's actually a big fan of this build. Um, this is the, the parting opener. That, How do you uh, think this shapes up against Proxy Factory? I... Okay, so I've played a little bit of 17 Nexus myself. A lot of it, actually. Um, Proxy Factory is not a common build. It, so normally with a two guest build, the factory is still at home. And so this is actually, a, this would be a very good situation if the factory was at home because the five adepts get out really fast and they can one shot Hellions and Mines. But with it Proxy, like, okay, Sidestorm has to sniff it out basically because then he can warp in the five adepts at home and then he can still defend by one-shotting. But if he warps in everything across the map, he could be in trouble. Um, and it's not even Hellions. It's... okay. Uh... Thanks. This is one base, one on one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. for sure. I mean, I don't think it'll work <sighs> out that way. But it's one base, one one one. Yeah. This is interesting. Um, I think this is good for Sizedorm. He's going to have a lot of early units. He still hasn't scattered it out, though. These Adepts are going to go across the map, and they're going to find nothing, and then he's going to have to turn around. Or he's going to have to recall, probably. It's actually going 6 Adepts instead of 5. So he doesn't have Stalk right now. So, I mean, this this marine, he's going to see these marines rallying across the map, and he should know something is up already. He sees no natural. So he has to shade up the ramp. Now, right? You can recall or you can commit, kill the supply depot, kill everything else, and then go back home and defend what's left. Um, it looks like okay. he's opting for the ladder. Yeah. Only problem I have with that is that the adepts are going to take a really long time to get rid of those supply depots, and while he's spending this time, Taking down the supply depots. Gypsy Danger is setting up a really nice siege. He's got a supply depot coming up. He's already going to be able to kill his natural, basically guaranteed. And uh, I mean, this is really good damage for Psystorm on the other side of the map. I don't know how to call this game. All the Marines are going down, actually. Does Psystorm just win this? I think he does. Yeah, I mean, at least adept, he's going to lose no adapts here. Well, he oh, lost Taran one. Has yeah, the probes are pulled. Is done. Like, how good is the medevac tank micro, right? Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. There's four stalkers. That might have just ended it. Yeah. 
the pro pull was good, the stalker warping was just enough to kind of clear it out and already one tank going down, Psystorm takes game number three in less than five minutes, so <laughs> not quite making it the 35 minute mark. Man, but... Gypsy didn't even try to dodge the lasers, yeah. this is so sad. Yeah. Absolutely tragic. And Psystorm moves on to the winner's match, um, so... You know, I... I was rooting for Gypsy Danger to win that one, but uh, in the end, NA reigns supreme, as as I think everybody knew deep down in their hearts. Okay, so we move on to our first PvP of the day. It's going to be Daniello versus Laser Cat. Um, I think everybody favors Daniello here, unfortunately, for Laser Cat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Laser Cat is an absolute PvP beast. Uh, I think if he is allowed to get to twenty minutes, he's got three, three disruptors and DTs. There's a chance. But knowing Dan Yellow, we probably won't make it past twelve minutes without some shenanigans happening. Um, so it's gonna be a rough one. Uh, Laser Cat's a great preparation player. Uh, he really does his research. He watches replays. He watches VODs. Um, so maybe he is wary of Dan Daniello's style, and maybe he can put together a solid defense or whatever is going to be thrown at him. But Denny is a two-time EU regional champion, and uh, that's for a reason. So. And currently at the head of the standings, I believe, I can't remember where we put the standings on Lokopedia, but fairly certain that's what I saw. Um, Daniello is the highest. Also, seat. yeah, yeah. Um, also, taking on the, uh, the mantle of Fiant in this group. Fiant, unfortunately, could not play, so... Yeah. <clears throat> Why did you time out Acheron? Magnus, what the hell? Acheron, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, sweet. Laser Cat. Just gonna be spending some time waiting for Lazy Cat and Yellow to show up. So, perhaps they uh, weren't expecting that series to go so short. Yeah. But, okay. So, Lazy Cat is Western US, so it's gonna be. N A U N A. And okay, looks like everybody's here. Wow. Almost everybody. If my freaking client will load, we can go on A. It's so random when it lets you log into this game and when it doesn't. Yeah. Okay, I'm here. I'm on the server. Okay. It's like, okay. Laser Gat's actually around 5k. That's, I mean, that's a peak for him. Oh my god. Maybe maybe I'm starting to believe. I mean I remember when he was in diamond. It grew up so fast. Yeah. Oh 
Oh, there's the standings. Are we, uh, are we ready? Oh, yeah, no. Daniela's in the lead by 600 points. It's not even close. Yeah, no. Uh, Daniela has had an absolute dominant year uh, on the EU side of things. Um, I think standings might have been closer if Chelsea participated in things outside of the EU regional, but that was not the case. Um, so, uh, 610 points from the bi weekly alone. My God. Yeah. The bi weekly yeah. alone would get him just under chocolate. That's insane. Yep. Um, him and the ops really farm the bi weeklies, I think. The, the great way to get PvP and PvZ practice, I'll put it that way. Uh, as we have spawning in the bottom left hand corner of 2000 Atmospheres LE, uh, representing X Alien and Poland, he is the pink Protoss, Deny. And in the top right for Cryptic, it's Lazor Cat. Cryptic with two members in this group. Look at that. Yeah. Group Cryptic. Doing Chrome. Uh, Chrome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the two Protoss there, actually stylistically kind of similar. I think if you, um, their styles as being similar, but their strengths being a little bit different. I mean, Laser Cat is a very, I feel like, cerebral player, while Psystorm is mechanically much more solid. Um, but overall, I mean, they're mostly macro focused, but willing to mix it up, as we saw. Uh, with the Sizeform series, and as we'll probably see with this uh, laser cat series, so. And Danny representing X Alien, that's a new clan. I think they have Milky Cow on that team as well. So, a couple of other Euro uh, European GMs, so. Uh, exciting stuff to see for them. Cybercore is down, Gateway is down, everything looks to be in good time for both players. Yep. No proxies, nothing too weird. I mean, the main difference here is we saw Laser Cat go for the uh, first Gate Scout, and Deny went for the second Gate Scout. So slightly, slightly better economically for Deny, but Laser Cat is making up for that by pro harassing. So actually not consequential at all. And then Stalker sent you from both sides. Woohoo! <laughs> I love PvP. Defensive it is my passion. Play. Let's go. Yep. Newling was uh, talking about the previous game. Um, what was that build order? So, the build order that Sidestorm went for was a Nexus before Gas without a Chrono Boost on probes. Uh, after the first pylon. So, lots of extra minerals to get that Nexus out really quickly. And then, because you weren't Chrono Boosting the probes after the pylon, you have an extra Chrono Boost that you can then use to do whatever you want with it. In that case, he um, Chrono Boost is Adept, and on top of that, Chrono Boost Warp Gate three times, which means that he's suddenly warping in very, very quickly. And while this build order is very light on gas, you could see he had a ton of gateway units out really fast. and. Your goal is to just try to get as much damage done defensively or offensively using just pure gateway units. It's a very parting-esque build order. Um, it is, and parting is the one who kind of invented it. Uh, he showed it off initially in uh, I Am Katavitze 2021. Uh, yeah, and he beat TY with it, who was on an absolute tear leading up to that point. So. That is the 17 Nexus. As we still have, like, nothing happening in this PvP. Oh, yeah. No, this, this seems to be the track for most of our PvPs in this in this event. Um, we've seen, like, one cannon rush, I think. Okay. Out of that... all of the PvPs. Um, is that Newling? I believe so. I believe yeah, so. that's... 
Uh, Magnath is saying in the chat that uh, Soul Spirit is on X Alien. Yeah, Soul Spirit did two o two one Raider uh, in DreamHack today. So. Oh my God. Uh, yes. Um, Rainer was molding about that. I can imagine. It was really weird. He just, like, showed up with a bunch of roaches without roach speed, and then carapace instead of range attacks, and then A move him, and I... That doesn't even... Can't explain it. You. Like... It makes no sense. <laughs> Rainer was playing Zerg, right? Yeah. <laughs> he was playing Zerg. <laughs> oh my god. Well, you know what? Okay, I have a theory about this. He has not been playing Zerg. He's been playing um, Terran and Protoss in tournaments to the point of it being memes. Like, he, I, I watched him throw away, like, hundreds of dollars the other day um, in an ESL Pro Tour. He, he, like, reached the round of eight, and he's like, yeah, I don't like money or points, and just went Protoss <laughs> against Beyond. Um, okay, but he did beat Armani with his Protoss. He did. And that he same, did. Yeah. yes. Yes, that's correct. I think. But he also uh, means Zerg, and I feel like that helps out a lot, right? Because you, know, <laughs> you know the race. Um, yeah. As Laser Cat's actually getting a lot done with these adepts, and uh, then Yellow is really struggling to deal with them in a, any sort of clean way. He just, I mean, Laser Cat just keeps warping in from that pylon he built at the beginning of the game, and gets two sentries, gets a couple of probes, and you can see Laser Cat is now just up eight workers and there's nothing that daniello has to show for it he has a sore third base just by a little bit but blink is at the same time plus one is even slightly later for daniello so uh no sentries even to do any scouting with and i mean daniello looks like he's going to try to move across the map but laser cat's got an immortal out and this is looking very good for the american protoss And in the chat saying, honorable macro PvP, not my taste. It was revealed recently that you can rush, so that's not a, an unsurprising comment from you. Ooh. I, not a single stalker lost for Dan Yellow. I, I, I was worried there for a second, but... Yeah. He, uh, he had some excellent blink micro. As we expect from Dan Yellow, I mean, he's... He is known for that... For those mechanics, I mean, he's a he's an absolute beast with the stalkers. Lots of times, he just wins games by a move or doing these massive lane stalker attacks. And, Laser um, cats around thirty seconds ahead on his plus two. That could give him a window to make something happen. So, uh, reality, tell us about what upgrades, what attack upgrades mean in PvP, and what like one attack upgrade advantage means what plus two attack upgrade advantage means that is a wonderful question renegade so in pvp um before the shield battery overcharge buff um it was mostly archon and zealot based so plus two was the main attack uh, upgrade because it made it made it so archons took one less shot to kill zealots which is a really big deal but now each upgrade is important because it's a lot more stalker based. It takes 11 stalkers to one shot a stalker with plus zero. With plus one, it takes 10. With plus two, it takes nine. With plus three, it takes eight. Um, armor has no effect on how many shots it takes to kill a stalker from, with other stalkers until you have plus three, in which case it adds one to each of those numbers. So um, if Laser Cat wants to do, hit a plus to timing here um he could he could honestly probably win because i mean well he doesn't have any archons but um those stalkers having to do one less shot to kill the stalkers of his opponent is really big when it comes to these big stalker battles but um you can see daniello already moving in towards zealots and laser cat just going straight to disruptors instead of getting archons so uh perhaps a wiser decision to be sitting back here and just continuing to further his lead. Well, unfortunately, Laser Cat not hitting that timing. But fortunately, yeah. Laser Cat starting plus three super early. Yep. And uh, if he notices that he does have the upgrade advantage, I would love to see him just absolutely Chrono Boost plus three. But I don't. I don't think it's going to finish in time for this 
fight, but... I mean, with the Disruptors and with the defensive advantage, Laser Cat should be in a good position to hold this, although that first Disruptor is whiffing, and a couple more of those, and... I mean, Denny's army is really good. The Immortals, Archons, that's all really good against uh, just the pure Stalker Immortal from Laser Cat, as long as it's able to bait out the Disruptors. Because when the main is also a really strong move, as a bunch of Zealots warped in, this is going to force Laser Cat back into his own main base, allowing for uh, Denny to get to a good spot outside the third. The Zealots are also going to grab a bunch of probes, 10 going down already as we see Laser Cat a little bit slow to respond, and then at his third base, Dan Daniello is going to push in, he's going to get that pylon. The battery is still powered, but the massive disruptor shot's going down, and okay. It was looking a bit rough, but... Laser Cat is going to hold, and um, I think the longer this game goes, the better it's going to be for Laser Cat. I mean, he's ahead in tech. He's down in economy right now, but I don't think that's well, going to last. As we do see, there's a bank to spend. He can get a this, fourth base. Uh, this Warpin's doing work in the main. Did not yeah. get cleaned up, but he traded out really well. He took down a whole wave of Zealots and quite a few Stalkers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... Getting the economic damage and getting those trades that he did were enough to keep him in the game. I think he was really far behind before, but now this is a very playable position for Denai. He's going to recognize that, he's going to go home with his main army, and uh, looks like he's looking to take his fourth base as well. So we are just going to go into a macro game from here, um, and uh, as PvPs tend to do, the excitement will end here. Um, Dark and Shrine in development for Laser Cat. Yeah, this, I mean, so. this is what I was mentioning. Once, if Laser Cat gets into that late game disruptor DT, I actually I'm scared for uh, Deny because Laser Cat is a beast when it comes to those kinds of games. Laser Cat moving out now, looking to make some kind of move on this fourth base of Deny. Not sure how much I like this move as Deny has his own disruptors out now, and like I was mentioning earlier, he has this Archons and Zealots, a little bit more army complexity than Laser Cat. And actually, if we look at, uh, above this army, the disruptors kind of get caught here from Laser Cat, but the disruptor shots fire first from Laser Cat, and all the disruptors of Deny going down. Blink forward, he is going to snipe that disruptor in time before it hits. Prism in the main is killing a bunch of workers of Deny, and suddenly, just like that, Laser Cat is going to take game number one. GG, well played. We're going G to you. We need a Legion Cup history book. What What are you going to do? Like, in the beginning, Prime made the server. <laughs> made, the, made the server and the bracket, and Prime saw that it was good. But then there was war in the heavens. The fairest of all the angels, Dave Testa, rebelled. Like, what? What are we going to do with the Legion Cup history book? <laughs> that's not even a history book. That's that's a Legion Cup Bible right there. Yeah. No, literally. It's <laughs> figuratively. Literally. Yeah. Man, don't you just love PvP? All that build-up, and then the game ends in, like, 30 seconds from a very perfectly playable position for the night. <laughs> DT's pretty good. DT's pretty good. Uh, well, I feel like it was more the disruptor shots killing everything of deny, and then also the DTs. <laughs> yeah, and also the ratio, the L. Yeah. Maidenless. Yep. Laser cat Twitter canceled deny in that game. <laughs> yeah, that was game one, Mister L. Moving over to EU, right? Are we? Uh... Uh... Huh. I don't see anybody else over here, so I'm gonna... Go back to NA. Okay, come back. See? Gator says come back. Okay.
Okay, get back. Lazy cat's here. It's not in game. <laughs> okay, taking a break. Magneth, what is landscape mobile? You need to switch to Mint Mobile. With Mint Mobile, you can get a plan starting as low as $15 a month based on T-Mobile's excellent network. Is that Run sponsored? Ryan Reynolds. It's... I wish. <laughs> I, I actually did switch to Mint Mobile, and it's it's great. It's actually phenomenal. That's sick. I was paying like 65 bucks to Verizon. I pay 30 and I get unlimited data now. I was getting four gigs before. It's base. Yeah. It's Denny. Yeah. Looks like we have a three minute break. Yep. Three minute break to fill. We can oh talk boy. about Mint Mobile if we want. I, I no, don't know it's how really much good. more Mint Mobile they, I have. They don't I, yeah. harass me with emails or anything. And you get yeah. like automated phone calls from Ryan Reynolds. It's great. <laughs> that's the that's the greatest positive. Is the coverage pretty good? It's it's way better than Verizon was, at least in my area. But I can yeah. imagine like it's probably not as good in the country. You like want right. to be at least in a town. So for a majority of people it's probably a, a better option. Yeah. And my speeds are like twice when i got on verizon that's that's good it's, it's crazy like you it sounds like that shouldn't be the case but it just is and right i i'd imagine they're gonna raise rates at some point but for now i'm locked in for a year and that's really good <clears throat> yeah i well i think with the i think it's a there's a fire, firebase coverage right like some of these newer stuff like ting and mint and google fi are just like they focus on having really good coverage in highly populated areas and then charge really or make it really cheap. So right. kind of target that sort of audience. And I don't, I, I mean, I haven't figured all pretty competitive with each other. So I don't feel like they can just get away with raising prices for no reason. Yeah. But that is a conversation for another time as we are loading into game number two. Here we have spawning in the top left-hand corner of Berlingrad, down a game and looking to come back in this series. He is hailing from X-Alien. It is Deny. D Denny. Denny. It's in it's Denny. the bottom right from Cryptic. It's a man who needs no introduction. He does not need an introduction. Absolute yeah, right. beast yep. of the PvP matchup. This man has been taking names since some of us were not even playing StarCraft. Like me. Uh. Laser Cat goes for a Scalderino. Deny. He's waiting to send his probe out. Yep. So a similar setup to last game where we have Denny going for the second gate scout. Or is he? Okay, maybe it's a Cybercore scout. Either way, Denny is either not scouting or going for a late scout, and Laser Cat going for a much earlier scout off of that first gate. Okay, so it's gonna be a Cybercore scout. But in the end, not too consequential. Laser Cat does have that insane APM to probe harass <laughs> uh, and, and make up that mineral difference. He's a Protoss, so uh, to translate reality, it's 40. <laughs> Dude, opening yep. as Protoss though is really chill. Like I don't know what to do. I get jittery. Like there's <laughs> so little to do yep. when you get in the Protoss early game. Yeah. I mean you sit there and you can just enjoy the the graphics of the game. You can admire the map. Look at the critters. Like it's I like sip on a so margarita, I... make a sandwich, <laughs> talk to chat. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, but Protoss is the best race. For some reason, all my pro gamer friends are Protoss, so like, 
I've been in the room with a couple pro gamer Protoss, and they, they will leave. They'll be playing a ladder game, <laughs> just set up their opener and walk away. They're like, yeah, I gotta go take a phone call. <laughs> and they're like, oh, should, do you want me to micro for you? Nah, we're, we're good. I'll come back in a minute, 40. And I'm like, oh, wow. Um, <laughs> you're really gonna beat 4GG, and then they do. And yep. that's the ladder game. <laughs> um, well, uh, Danny is gonna be doing a little bit uh, more involved opener here than uh, than walking away and taking a phone call as he does set up a proxy, but Laser Cat instantly scouts it. That is that is such that is powerful. Laser Cat is so handsome. I mean, was that always going to be a fake here for Denny? No. Okay, he's doing this build. Okay. This is a charge lot disruptor all in on one base. He did this build a bunch versus Chelch in the uh, finals they most recently played in for the EU regionals. Um, I think it was, would that be summer? Um, but yeah, he's gonna get two disruptors in a warp prism and uh and then shoot disruptors and then once he feels like he's killed enough with the disruptors he's gonna a move laser cat with zealots and um uh, that's the build it's insane um i i feel like i think i was casting with somebody when or i was watching it i can't even remember either way when i first saw this build i was losing my mind because this is like, not supposed to be in StarCraft 2. Like, this isn't supposed to be part of the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Disruptors and Zealots aren't supposed to synergize, but here he is synergizing them. It's just really difficult, right? Because there's always the danger of just marking your own troops. Right, exactly. I mean, it, it's one Miss Micro, and suddenly Denny is down 5, 10 Zealots for no reason, and it's Laser Cat just told it. Again. <laughs> this is Zap Brannigan style warfare. It's like, well, yeah. these killbots have a counter of 9,999. Nah, got you guys. This is a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Yep. Good luck with the disruptor connections. <laughs> I don't think Laser Cat actually has sent this out. He's dropping a forge right now. No, he's one base, Laser Cat. You can't drop a forge. That is. You. Hmm. He wants cannons soon. Y yeah. Uh. Hmm. I don't think those cannons will be up in time. Um, oh, the disruptor get a shot off. All right, here we go. I did. Deny. Moves in. There's actually no defenders to meet him, so he's going to be able to merc the shield battery. This is so sad. Yeah. And the natural's gone. Giving up the natural. I mean, he doesn't have enough to defend it, so it's better than trying to de to defend the natural, I suppose. I, I feel like you could buy time with force fields, though. If you're yeah, I mean... Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Those are some good force fields. He's going to get the disruptor. Get it, okay. Yeah. That's a big pick. Denny is making... Wait, did I see that right? He has a Templar Archives. Denny is going to make Archons. This is... Okay, I've never seen this build go this advanced. I mean, he usually just lands with the Disruptors and the Zealots. So he's he's following it up with Immortals and Archons on one base. Laser Cat is starting plus one attack. He, th that's, that's an expensive oh. and risky call. Yeah, and uh, looking very precarious for Laser Cat to taking that Disruptor shot as well. This Disruptor has nine kills. I would say that's probably paid for itself. Three Immortals are out though, four Laser Cat. Maybe once these Immortal count gets higher. Okay, the Force Field walls out the Zealots. Disruptor does own away the rest of the army, but I don't think it's gonna be enough for those Zealots to make it out alive. Laser Cat is being that one person that we all know that like makes $9 an hour, has rent due at the end of the month, blew all their savings, and it's like, yeah, I really, 
I really need a new sound system. And you're like, no, can you afford that? Can you? And it's like, yeah, but think how good the sound system would be. It's like, but you need housing. Oh and god, and that disruptor is gonna clean everything up. And that's yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was rough. I almost started to bleed for a second, but like you said, um, that sound system was not in Laser Cat's budget. Yeah. He's like, bro, I can't afford rent anymore. It's like, oh. <laughs> you have a sound can't system. Can't imagine why. <laughs> This is so sad. Capitalism. Play Despacito. Yeah. That's, yeah. Dude, damn capitalism. Um, going to game three again. I mean, this... <laughs> we are looking to repeat the five-hour group that we had yesterday um, without even having that long of games, just by having an extremely long series. Everything going to Ace Match. I'm kind of sad that he didn't end up making one base Immortal Archon, and mm -hmm. he just won before that, because that is top-tier memory. I mean, you can work with, like, one Archon every two minutes. Only two gases. Everybody is talking about the forge in the chat right now. <laughs> the two minute delay. Yes, lazy cat. The forge was a questionable decision there. <laughs> okay. Let us introduce the players. Game number three. So you have spawning. In the top right hand corner of Hardwire, breaking out his sig signature build in the previous game, heading from X Alien and Poland, it is the Pink Protoss Deny. Denny. And in the bottom left, as the Red Protoss, it's Laser Cat one final time. Yep. Uh, player will be going to the winner's match. One player will be going to the loser's match. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you always want to be going to the winner's match in this sort of GSL style group, but especially this time, I think either of these players would rather be playing in Sidestorm than Gypsy Danger in the winner's match. Uh, rather be playing against Sidestorm in the winner's match or Gypsy Dan than Gypsy Danger in the losers because we mentioned before, Gypsy Danger is an amazing PvP sniper, and um, we've seen already both these players are... They know their way around a PvP, so... Um, Sidestorm, of course, not a slouch in PvP, but... I I would rather be facing Sidestorm's PvP than Gypsy Danger's TvP, so... Uh, and I think these players are feeling the same way, so... A lot on the line here for these two, it's not quite the winner's match, but it's kind of close to them, I think, in the way they're handling it, so. Something uh, something kind of weird about this group in particular is that Legion Cup is a preparation tournament, and these guys have had almost an extra half a week to prepare yeah. for one another. So they had a lot of time to suss each other out. Now, I don't know who did or didn't study each other's replays or... Um, try to look at the stats at sc2 replay stats or whatever of their opponents but we should have the most prepared players we've seen so far and it should lead to a very very close group yeah absolutely and um i was mentioning before laser cat is a great preparation player um and along that same train of thought denny is um also an amazing preparation player in fact Denny is kind of known for his preparation. Uh, a lot of his dominance in the EU region has been, I think, mostly due to his preparation. Uh, he's not always been the highest MMR player. And while we know that he has a very strong PvP, um, and obviously EU being a region that is basically only Protoss, except for Fiat and, and Lucas Dart, <laughs> uh, 
Gypsy Danger in the last season. And but uh, like you really can blow an opponent that is much higher than MMR than you out of the water if you prepare well. Uh, it all depends on which effort you put in. I I played it in the Camera Star League one season, and a platinum player named Traz um, actually studied like six hours of my mods and figured out exactly the overlord patterns I scouted, exactly um, what timings I did, exactly what builds I did, and just just demolished me, just dismantled me. Like, he knew my weaknesses better than I did, and I was Masters 2 at the time. Um, yeah. Something like that, so... It, it can be done. Um, Absolutely. Even by the weakest on-paper players. Right. And Benny is a player that will do maybe not six hours of preparation, but he'll do a lot. Yeah. And on top of that, he's not the weakest. I mean, he's not the highest MMR player. We have some 5-2s, five 5-3s, five even. I think uh, Azura hits 5-4 every now and then. Um, and Denny is a modest 5-1, 5k most of the time. But, I mean, you can see he makes up for it all uh, getting two championships under his belt just basically off of pure preparation and laser cat's very similar he's a 4.7 to 4.9 5k kind of player and uh, he has had amazing results throughout legion cup he's here because i mean he hasn't won a major tournament i don't think he's won one bi-weekly but aside from that it's just like consistent round of four um consistent round of eights in the season finals and that's all due to not bracket luck but Amazing preparation, beating some great players just by getting the right builders out against them. So, um, <clears throat> we're getting into another macro PvP, so it's going to be a lot of talking, and I'm starting to regret not getting some water before starting this match. Uh, <laughs> water OP. Yeah. Hey, why is Laser Cat up seven workers? That is weird. It doesn't matter how much water you drink, there's always that point. Everyone has their tipping point where your throat just gets super dry. That's what yeah. happens. You're forcing wind down it. Um, yep. Absolutely. Um, you go above four and a half hours of casting, you turn into like <laughs> the grandma from the chocolate sales episode of Spongebob. <laughs> that's your throat that's an accurate picture that's like an x-ray of someone's throat after casting yeah yeah <laughs> you wouldn't know anything about that though right no four and a half hours no never uh, okay so it looks like denny's gonna be going for a push here he recognizes he's behind i don't know why he's behind so i apologize chat i mean bag math you can roast me um but He's going in. There's a shield battery here for Laser Cat. I think yeah, so, if this Nexus gets up and there's a battery overcharge, then he should hold. So Denai right. is behind because um, Laser Cat went for something we learned from Alpha Star, which is oversaturation, right? Okay. So he mined at semi efficiency on his natural base for a long time, kept making probes. And that's going to pay off for him once he gets his third up. Oh my god, plus one's about to hit for Laser Cat, and he's already winning this engagement. The Immortal is untouched. It just procked its barrier now, and this is a total route for Deny. Yeah, that was an amazing fight. The force fields were uh, amazing, and I think Denny actually blinked forward there. And so there was no way for those stalkers to retreat, and without the prism to pick them up in micro... Laser Cat took a decisive fight there. He's up 20 workers. A little bit behind on plus two, but I makes, I mean, 20 workers is way too much. Um, ahead on army supply. He's got a prism coming. He's going to be looking to do some kind of counter attack here. And I, I mean, battery overcharge is good, but I don't believe in the defense here for, for Denny if uh, Laser Cat does go for the attack. Robo Bay starting up for laser cat so I, I think he probably will wait for disruptors before assaulting denny i i think is it denny i think magnet might be messing with us i think it might be deny it was i don't know gator gator messaged me after game one and said it's denny like the restaurant 
and so I'm I'm gonna trust the British man on this one. I think he's like an English major or something. So um yeah, I mean I might regret that and this might be a massive practical joke, in which case I will never forgive the British people for what they did to my country. But, Wait, uh, he's a he's a British English major? Like what does he do? Look out the window? <laughs> It's like, yeah, no, this beans and toast is really good. <laughs> I have my degree now. And just stares in the mirror for hours. Yeah. <laughs> he's a he's an expert on his self. Um <laughs> I think that's what Oh I think my that's god, the immortal's gonna major. get blinked down, it's gone. Yeah, so Denny has actually not made pros for a while here and he, he has instead made a ton of zealots. Yeah, no. Is a cat getting caught out? There's, there's no. He didn't spend money on Robo Bay attack. Laser Cat's choking. Look at that bank. Look at that bank. What is he Overcharge doing? Overcharge is well, good though, and 11, eleven workers. Probes. Yeah. Yeah. So Denny is insanely all in. Denny has half the workers at least. He's all in, but like I, I like his chances right now. Laser Cat just now mm -hmm. starting a disruptor. He could have several already. He's losing. He's losing this fight. Well, well, the immortal doesn't yeah. reposition. Okay. Okay, the immortal There's didn't. Just reposition. enough zealots. Oh okay. Oh my god. Laser cat, you legend. Laser cat is. I mean, okay, he lost 14 workers, which would be enough damage for Denny if he wasn't already down 30 going into that fight. Um. So, what is happening in chat? Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Stop um, timing out Acheron. What the fuck? Magnus is a huge bully. Uh, yeah, 30 workers to 50. Then he's going to go for another couple of all-ins because he's, I mean, never give up, never surrender. But it looks like Laser Cat is in a commanding position this series. Disruptor is now out with, I don't even think that's enough stalkers to one-shot it. The Archon does get cut out, but he, the other one retreats to his other two friends into the battery. The Disruptor kills some of his own Stalkers. It doesn't matter. The Zealots are cleared with more Stalkers for Laser Cat than for Denny. He has a battery to fall back to. GG well played. Wow. Laser Cat takes the series 2-1. to one. We have an NA versus NA winner's match. Man, this region. We should give more spots to NA than EU, I think. Oh, I totally agree. There was that shift at one point, right? Didn't didn't this tournament used to have like more any favored rules, and then Magnus came in and he's like, "No, <laughs> we're we're going to EU." Yep. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think this year historically it's been EU favored. I mean, uh, with represent mostly in the biweeklies, and I think. For most of the season finals, it was the win rates were EU favored. But then uh, Up a Tree signed up for the circuit, which was a really help, big help for the NA. And then Old Man Slum started playing again. And suddenly we have two amazing NA players that are really showing up. And then suddenly, oh, okay, Up a Tree and Old Man Slum are doing well. So I guess Blazer Cat's going to start practicing now. And suddenly we have a good, we have a big three, and Size Storm is always amazing. So, hey. It's looking like a NA sweep here in the in the championship. And we're doing the winner's match first. Okay. Yeah. Well, while they do vetoes, I'm going to go grab myself a cup of water. Um, so my preparedness is showing. Why? The Archon's gonna scare it away a little. And he's adapts gonna.
Oh my god, the Chicken Man Testa is going so fast. Dude, we've done two best of threes. They are in the semifinals. Like, what? <clears throat> Looks like it's going to be Gerald versus Trigger in the finals, probably. Yeah, that's it. I said it. Neeb's going down. Trigger's got this. Trigger best Protoss NA, question mark? So true. Trigger is a beast. He got so good so fast. Yeah, it's really impressive. And he's actually kind of still stayed good even after the Void Rainer. In fact, I would some would say he's actually even started having better results. So Well, his his play's just been adjusting. Like he, he yeah. just so do you do you know the trigger story? I know some trigger lore, but so I feel like this is something I'm missing. The the deep trigger lore is that he was the best zone control arcade map player. And he only <laughs> played that year after year. And then he started laddering, immediately hit masters, um, started taking lessons from Nina, hit GM, became semi pro, became pro over the span of like six months. And he started out cannon rushing everybody, moved into um, the really, the, the um, proxy shield battery void ray play that was like really popular at the time. And then slowly transitioned into macro. And like, here we are, he's like literally one of the best Protoss in North America. It's, it's insane. That is and that was, cool. that was the end of 2020 for the yeah. timeline so it, it's not been very long at all yeah and he's only like 18 yeah and no i, I mean i i was tracking because he was an alpha x when he first started mm -hmm. playing uh semi-professionally um i knew that he had just kind of popped up out of nowhere but i did not know the deep lore at uh so that's i mean that's super cool and to know that he started off as a cannon rusher is very validating for anybody that's ever cannon rushed to know that we are the most talented gamers in the world. Uh, so. So, <clears throat> looks like we have a five minute break, folks. Um, I'm going to play some B roll and we will be back with our winner's match. Stay tuned.
Okay, we back. We back, we back. Uh, hello. Hi. Man, I missed Diamond League. You brought that up and now I'm all nostalgically <laughs> sad. Yep. I think it was I mean that was a while ago. I think November's League killed the Diamond League. Ripperino. Yep. Well, I don't think Diamond Tape League would be the same without Kyogen and Xeno. Oh yeah, dude, rip Kyogen. I miss Kyogen so much. He doesn't play yeah. this game anymore. Yeah. He was a great guy. <clears throat> but it is now the present. We have no Kyogen, but we do have the two cryptic boys in the winner's match. Spawning in the bottom left hand corner of 2K Atmospheres, we have the purple Protoss representing Cryptic in the United States of America. He is Psystorm. And in the top right, also from Cryptic, it's Laser Cat. So Laser Cat showing his PvP skills, taking out the points leader. Yeah. Good to see him in this winner's match. Um, after having to prepare for both of these players, I do know that they they practice against each other. I have seen their, their custom game replays. Um, so this should be an interesting PvP. I keep... I keep saying this with every group, but it, it's kind of sad about the winner's matches in this format because, like, this is, to my mind, the match with the least stakes. Yeah, you might be upset you have to play in deciders. Yeah, there might be an opponent that you maybe don't want to hit, but, like, this comes down to seeding. It, it might, I, I don't know who these guys want to play in the final bracket. Like, it might actually be strategically good to come in second in the group, depending on who you want to play um in the round of eight so yeah actually the the brackets already seated so we can check that uh, i think first place plays against slayer uh maybe <laughs> right uh <laughs> second place plays against newling so more pvp pog yep so. no matchup diversity but um, certainly the diversity of players. I think Slayer and Newling are very different in their play styles. So. Um, Psystorm proxying, Stargate. Okay, this is very common for Psystorm. Psystorm's signature build is proxy Stargate, actually. If I would be so bold to say. Um, in fact... I basically just met a game proxy target every game versus him. <laughs> just go for a stalker every game. Because <laughs> it's very common. So, uh, Laser Cat should know that this is certainly an option. Um, like we mentioned before, he's good prep. They're teammates. There's no reason why he wouldn't know that Sidestorm has a tendency to do this. So, Oracle first. Yeah. Laser cat Laser hunting. Can... Yeah, I but think he's, he's not gonna no. find it. So he scattered the right place on the map on the wrong side. Yeah. See the probe in the yeah, top yeah. left. Is it's absolutely mirror correct. spot. So he's gonna see it. He's gonna see the right? oracle. Maybe it depends on the mm. timing. Oh, this is gonna be close. Does it clip the oracle? It does not. It does not see the Oracle. And Mineral Line has no battery. This is an amazing start for Psystorm. Probe pull is pretty quick, but four probes already going down. The delayed mining time is, of course, massive at this stage in the game. Worker count is even, but there is still more damage to be done here. As a, uh, There is no shield battery. The Oracle can come in and trade HP for probes anytime it wants to. Uh, this is a great start for Sidestorm. This is exactly what it's like. Behind this, both players are going into Blink. Uh, looks like it's going to be more of the same that we saw from the previous series. Lots of 
blink play, lots of uh, fast upgrades, gateway units, and eventually disruptors and dark templar. So laser cut will have an advantage on that plus one, but we saw last series that he wasn't the greatest about capitalizing on upgrade advantages. So uh, it's not guaranteed that that will actually come into effect. Two adepts going on the attack. Uh, they will take a <laughs> take a while to reach their destination. They they don't believe in shades. This is a call of adepts that has sworn off splitting their souls from their bodies. Um, yeah, I don't think they're gonna get anything done. They remember the good old days where you had to walk everywhere. The uh, kids these days just can't appreciate the value of hard work. Something like that. Um, Shadowstorm is gonna have the block off. He's had lots of stalkers to deny that, so... Amish Adepts. Cat. Amish Adepts is the word. Amish Adepts, yeah. <laughs> um, Laser Cat not finding nearly the success this game with the Adepts as he did against in yellow. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, this is not looking great. Sidestorm's worker lead is now showing itself after the Oracle damage and the uh, delayed mining time. In fact, Sidestorm's actually going to try and capitalize on this lead right now. He blinks right into the main using the Oracle for Vision. The gateway is immediately powered down and there's a Stasis Ward. Stalker's a little bit split. Laser Cat does send a Stalker forward to tank the Stasis Ward, but I think that Sidestorm just has too much of an army lead yeah. here. Without a shield battery in sight, he probably I mean, just wins, right? If the gates weren't depowered, Laser Cat has a chance, but there's no reinforcements here. You're going to be producing Immortals one at a time, and that's it. Laser Cat can't afford to make gateways to repower this, but he's just not spending his money. There we go. Finally, two gateways, three gateways thrown down, but so much damage has occurred. Die Storm. Uh, focusing quite a bit on that attack, floating a little bit himself, so supply still looks kind of even, actually. And kind of a blunder there. Dude, no, it's actually, attack, Laser but... Cat's scamming. Psystorm didn't commit, and Laser Cat's third is not being attacked. Um, he's gonna have a prism really soon. Yeah, no, yeah. Size, <laughs> Laser Cat totally scammed his way out of that situation. He was yeah. super dead. <laughs> it was supposed to be amazing for Psystorm, but then he was floating 1k500 in, like... Okay, the third base is gonna get cancelled, so this is still good for Psystorm. Um, and... His own third base is almost finished, so, okay. He did get the Forge of Laser Cat, which is notable, but at the same time, Sidestorm has no upgrades of his own. So even with that uh, Forge being killed and plus two being delayed, Laser Cat's still going to have a sizable upgrade lead. But I don't think that Sidestorm intends to let Laser Cat enjoy that lead for too long. Um, as we see... Lots of gates have just gone down. He's warping in Zealots, he's warping in Archons. I'm thinking we have an attack coming in the somewhat near future, but Laser Cat is going to push the issue right now. Force Field's going to force the Stalkers backwards. Prism is going straight into the main base. <laughs> Two Adepts from, what was it, five minutes? <laughs> They're now finally going to find their damage. Here they go. They're going to do it. They're going to kill a probe. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't kill... There we go. There we go. They kill a Okay. Probe. Okay. They got their one probe consolation for being alive for so long. Main army fight is going to get halted at the third base of Laser Cat. Um, as he does have that shield battery. Three probes end up going down to that adept, but... Uh, Psystorm doesn't have a warp prism to reinforce on this side of the map. Uh, so... Laser Cat should be able to hold with the defensive warpins, and how does he keep doing it? I mean, he's got a work for lead. This is a suddenly a playable game again for Laser Cat. Um, well, there's a, quite a sizable army advantage for Sidestorm, but I believe in the power of battery overcharge in this situation, and especially with the Prism in the main warping and Zealots getting lots of damage done to Sidestorm's economy, he gets more and more all in by the minute. Oh, the prism does go down though, and that is going to shut down any f uh, future harassment. 
maybe a good thing for the laser cat because then he is forced to use all his orbins at home where he needs the units so yeah, he can defend and not die. And that's going to be a tall order. Psystorm has a very, very, very large army. He's taking a fourth base. Um, if he attacks right now, it would be very beneficial to him, he, especially if he attacks like right at the natural because that shield boundary is just so far back. Um, yeah. He's he's putzing around though. Doesn't yeah, I mean he he's down ten workers. Like this is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess he doesn't want to attack while taking a fourth base, but I mean he's just economically behind, and this is actually a really sizable army from Laser Cat. Big disruptor shot to open this fight, and Sidestorm is going to pull back now. Laser Cat. Still making workers, so he's certainly oversaturated on that third base, but should he ever choose to take a fourth, he will be able to saturate it very quickly. Stalkers clicking forward for the Disruptor, they're not going to get it. Instead, he loses four of his own Stalkers, but Psystorm's going to take this opportunity to run straight into the natural. Adepts in the third base of Psystorm are not going to get any damage, but uh, yeah, getting on top of production of these Disruptors is really good for Psystorm. The Zealot's kind of derping there with the battery overcharge. The oh. Disruptor kills an Archon in some of Laser Cat's own Zealots. This is such a crazy fight, but I think Laser Cat is coming out on top of this trade. Kinda. These Immortals putting in absolute work. So, Psystorm's attacking while he expands. So, like, yeah, Laser Cat wins the trades. But Psystorm has a fourth face. Like, Psystorm's getting up better economy. Psystorm's getting out tech. Finally starting to even the upgrade lead. Um, and that's something we haven't really touched on too much, is that Laser Cat's been fighting these battles with plus two, which is why they look so one-sided. Yeah. That is an excellent point. Laser Cat now finally taking his own fourth base. But as you mentioned, Psystorm is already pretty much fully saturated on the minerals. And... Um... He, I mean, he's been enjoying this fourth base for a while now, and Laser Cat's just not starting his. And so I still am looking to cancel it even further that economic lead that he has now established for himself, but losing a couple stalkers instead. Okay, I mean that once again the trade's going really well for Laser Cat. No plus three from him though is a big mistake, I think. Yeah, I mean, he very well could have had plus three to plus zero, which would have been devastating. Yeah. As I was mentioning before, that's the difference yeah. of 8 versus 11, so... Three shots. Yeah. Uh, so... Mm. <clears throat> missing out a bit on that upgrade lead, but we'll have to see if it actually comes into effect, because Laser Cat is up 40 supply right now, and that's basically all in army. Uh, they're fairly even on workers, so... Can someone Size? screenshot that Sorry. from Xenodactyl? This is very important. This is a very important moment in Legion Cup history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a very interesting I'm comment that from to Zeno. R slash new sentences. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, Sizestorm is rapidly running out of units i i talked about you know him being economically ahead him finally evening the upgrades but he i think he's just traded out too poorly for too long yeah he's been really active with his units which is a very size storm thing i mean he's probably got some nervous twitches he likes to be out on the map he likes to be microing and trading this is just not a good time for him to be trading he was down so much in upgrades his army complexity is worse than the immortals and sentries and disruptors that laser cat has and with the run by over there at the fifth base of Psystorm and the main army here at the third, I don't think Psystorm can hold on. There is some harassment going across the map from Psystorm. I think there's some zealots in the fourth base, but the problem uh, for Psystorm here is that this army is just so big from Laser Cat, and I don't think he can really engage into it. There's just not a lot here for our blue Protoss. I don't know what that zealot is doing. He was just running in circles while his friend, his, uh, his comrade fought. Um, but Laser Cat's actually going to go home now. The 60 supply lead, he is going to return home. And this game will continue for some reason. Plus 3 about halfway done for Laser Cat, and 2 2 not yet starting for Size Storm. <sighs> and Laser Cat just wins this, right? I don't. 
I I think so. Yeah. We don't have really any disruptors for Size Storm. Once he gets have... plus three and Shadow Stride, like yeah, uh, Laser Cats. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what I want to say. He's gonna be doing something. Yeah. Um, there we go. Laser There's a cannon, Zeno. You want to say that again? You want to say that again, Zeno Dactyl? Uh, I mean, these cannons aren't doing too well. To be fair to Zeno. Oh, massive disruptor shot. They bought time for the disruptors. That is true. Those are, you know, that, yeah, okay, the cannons were good. Zeno is wrong. Zeno is not a cannon expert. <laughs> um, print F to pay respects. Print F to pay respects. He's lost his PhD That's in actually cannon side. three four gates deep power. That's going to be huge during the coming engagement. Um, yeah. Laser I mean, Cat survives with all his DTs as well. <laughs> you just want, they just like that one was sitting with the rest yeah. of the of us. That swim CT is not even attacking. Excuse Hilarious. me, um, can I get through? Can I? Oh, this is very awkward. Can I ask you to move, sir? Just kind of <laughs> join my friends. Yeah, I mean, this is just such a commanding army supply lead for Laser Cat. I would, I mean, he's everything that Sidestorm has just melting before oh they even get God. to touch Laser Cat's demons. That, uh, that <laughs> resources lost board is disgusting. Ten thousand boar minerals lost for Sidestorm. Wow. 10,000. Upgrades, people, upgrades. They're important for PvP. Laser Cat is one map from topping his Legion Cup group stage two group. I, going into today, of all the timelines, Laser Cat topping the group was the least likely in my head. Laser Cat's an amazing player. I thought he had a great chance to make it out second. Get, you know, if he could get his PvPs together because some good prep, he could definitely make it out second. That was my thought. Mm. Laser Cat's showing up. This is an amazing time as well for him to be doing so. The most important tournament of the year. Making the run happen when it counts. I'm on the I'm on the hype train, man. I'm on the hype train. Hey reality. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to look stylish while you're on this hype train, what what kind of do you think there's a team that you should maybe check out their merch for? Like, let's say you wanted to be hype, but also have an eagle on your shirt. Wait, does Cryptic have merch? No, the Platinum Heroes do, though. Oh! And you can get 5% off with the code Platinum Heroes. That is, yeah, Platinum Heroes. That's a WTL level team. I mean, they are, yeah, they got a, they got a sick logo. Check them out. Do you have a, do you have a creator code? Is that... I do, just... I do not. I do not. They gave me their own code, so <laughs> they're using their own creator code. This is yeah. so sad. Um, but yeah, no, go check out their merch. Uh, they asked me to plug them, so there you go. Um, they are sponsors of this tournament, and Nightbot just posted a link to their Discord in the chat. So go check them out there. They have plenty of free coaching. I'm a coach there. Reality, are you a coach in Plot Heroes? I am not, <laughs> um, but... I considered. Okay, uh, go check out Alpha that. X. Reality is a free coach at Alpha X. Um, yeah. <laughs> and also the Plot Heroes. Uh, so. No, I, absolutely. I'm a big fan of Plot Heroes. Love what they do. They, uh, they have a lot of good players in the amateur scene, but they also have some outstanding pro players. Eva's on Platinum Heroes. Love Eva. Fun Hate fact. Both me and Creighton Olson did like our first paid professional tournaments with the Platinum Heroes. There you go. So that's awesome. Yeah, they give a lot of people their starts. Um, mm -hmm. Although the Platinum, they need to like rebrand to Diamond Heroes. Like it's it's <laughs> got to happen soon. Yeah, they mind the plats. Yeah, it's uh, really funny seeing all these <laughs> seeing when they try hard. In the... They, yeah. they had a purge, like, last year. They, like, banned a lot of Masters and Grandmasters from the server. They're like, this is getting too diluted. And then they just gave in. They're like, no, actually, actually, we want a pro team now. It's yep. the first course. And then they qualified for WTL. No, I mean, it's hilarious seeing the Platinum Heroes logo. Yeah. And it's, like, it's just, I mean, it's Plat, you know? And then they're playing against Beyond and Rainer and... <laughs> It's weird seeing the Cranky Ducklings, too. Like, the Cranky Ducklings used to be so tiny. Yeah. And now they both have pro teams. 
Yep. Awesome to see all these teams popping up even so late to the game's lifetime. So Alpha X is actually one of those. I remember going Alpha X with Psy X. You had just a bunch of casuals and then suddenly mm -hmm. Suchi's like, let's pay Estrella to play StarCraft. And that was the best decision ever made. Um, but focusing on this series at hand in the present, um, here we have top right corner having a great start last game, but not able to close it out against his monster of a teammate. It is Psystorm. And in the bottom left, up 1 0, trading insanely in the last game. It's Laser Cat. <clears throat> A man who should not be trifled with in this matchup, as we are learning today in this group. <clears throat> and some of us already knew that, that facing Laser Cat in a PvP was probably not going to go well for you. So right now, Oil Town is the lone Zerg in the round of eight, up a tree the lone Terran. The most we can possibly have is two Terrans and a Zerg. So Yeah. Uh, it's, it's gonna be a lot of more pvp moving yep. towards the finals i think yeah yeah and so that, i mean that's good for for laser cat i think um you know mm -hmm. i've i've been hyping him up because uh he's kicked my ass a couple of times uh in this matchup so uh yeah i in if he continues to show this level against all these other top Protoss in the tournament, I think he's got a great chance to make even like, even win the his first playoff match. And against Slayer, he could certainly pull it off, I think. Uh, Slayer is a player that really relies on his mechanics, kind of like Psystorm. Mm -hmm. um, and we saw Laser Cat can st still dismantle players like that. And New Ling is a little bit more tricky, but hey, I mean, he took down Daniello. So those tricky players, Laser Cat... He can take those too, so I, I'm becoming a massive believer. I think, uh, yeah, laser cat stonks are through the roof. Proxy Stargate from Psystorm. Oh, laser cat A moving into that probe, so it's gonna delay the scout a little bit, but he, yeah, so his rally is on path to scout this almost immediately. Um, so, another great start. For Laser Cat, uh, similar to that game two against Daniela, where he immediately scattered the proxy. But, well, this game goes like that one, then it's actually not good for him. So, if we believe in superstition, then this is a terrible start for Laser Cat. You should already call it GG. Here he goes. Okay. Shield battery. Is uh, doing absolutely nothing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Lays the cat. Had to see at home. Good discipline. Uh, we should see. Uh, yeah. Shield battery in the main. Shield battery in the natural. This is basically already held, uh, barring some weird stasis ward that Lazy Cat doesn't see. Then uh, this is a great. This is a much better opener than it was last game, which does not bode well for Psystorm, who. So one of two things is going to happen here. Psystorm is going to fly in, see the shield battery, and then make a second oracle. Or Psystorm is going to fly in, lose the first Oracle, and then cry and go to plan B. All right, it's going to be a first option. There's almost certainly going to be a second Oracle. Try to break the shield battery. I, I'd be surprised I, if he didn't. I think he's actually going to go for Blink instead and just cut his losses here. He th uh, we're both wrong. We're both wrong. We're trying. What do we know? I, yeah, I mean, hey, that was going to be my next guess. <laughs> Laser Cat's gonna get in though? Oh my god, okay. If that probe mineral walks sooner, he would have immediately scattered the Dark Shrine. Oh wait, it's not in the main base. Where is it? Oh. It's at the other proxy. Okay. My bad. I, I was like, it's it wasn't at the Stargate proxy, but okay, no. He's just proxying everywhere. Um, okay. Laser Cat's gonna scout this. <laughs> <laughs> just. <laughs> yep. Oh, poor Psystorm. 
Well, he already had a robo making anyway, so I think yeah, I think he was gonna be okay, but now he's super okay. There's the dark shrine finished, but DTs have to walk across the map, and by the time they arrive, I'm afraid observers will be quite operational. Yep. And Laser Cat is already enjoying a nice five worker lead. Uh, looks like Saiso moving out to take his third base, so it's going to be faster than Laser Cat's. But with the DT investment, uh, that shouldn't really matter, and Laser Cat should maintain his worker advantage. Uh, so. <laughs> there could be a situation where the DTs distract Laser Cat and then the Oracle comes in and gets a big stasis ward off. And maybe then that's a good enough economic damage to put to put Psy Storm a little bit more into the game, but I don't think it's enough still. That's the most ideal situation happens. Okay, he's gonna get one pro at the wall. Um and then lose almost all the HP on the other. Laser Cat's gonna go for a big two base attack. Um, I think, right? Yeah. He's up to six gateways, so. Uh, Oracle is gonna go down as well. So this is this is not looking good for Sidestorm. I don't I'm I'm not very confident in his ability to hold this attack. Laser um, Cat uh, only has half his forces here. I mean Sidestorm could pounce on them, but he does just doesn't have the scout on this position. Okay, okay, oh. no, he will, he will. Laser Cat reveals it, and he's gonna lose the sentries, which is pretty huge. His full army isn't here yet, and um, Psystorm is not trading the best, but he's trading out as good as can be hoped. Blinks away, yeah. doesn't even lose that rear stalker, so that was a really good play from Psystorm. Uh, that's a great start, actually. And I, as I was not believing, uh, Psystorm quenched my unbelief. And uh, made a fantastic play, but Laser Cat is not completely committing to this. Um, he has a Dark Shrine of his own coming up, and we have a Robo from Psystorm, but we don't have an Observer, and we just lost the Oracle for Psystorm. So this has potential to deal damage, and Laser Cat wasn't really behind. I mean, he's now kind of falling behind after this attack failed but I mean, he's taking his own third base and this dark shrine is i mean it's at this point guaranteed to deal at least a couple of throws of damage and that'll put him into a pretty good spot for this game big supply block delaying this immortal by a lot of time a significant amount of time i think it's like 25 seconds something like that um which of course isn't impactful on its own but it's going to delay all the Immortals that would come after it. Yeah. How many OBS do we have? None. None. Oh, Yep. so that's hugely impactful. He has to cancel the Immortal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ripperino. Uh, yeah. Wow. No, this is, a, this oh. is amazing. Uh, eight probes already going down. Surely more to come. There's DTs in every base. The Observer does pop. And so he is going to lose that um, uh, DT in the main base. But 14 probes going down. Um, and three DTs in exchange for that. I think that was pretty worth for Laser Cat. Uh, his own third base has now finished. He's begun probing that up. He's got a nice looking army at home. Lots of stalkers. Um, and uh, yeah. This is looking like a 2-0 win for Laser Cat. That is... Dominating. I am excited uh, to see how well he does in the playoffs. I, I mean, I don't want to call it too early. It is PvP, but at the same time, oh, no. I'm so hyped. As four more probes go down, five or a side door. DT is in the, na in in the, the main, natural. DT in the natural. Yeah. He's too cracked. He can't be stopped. He is so big brain, so good at the game laser cat absolute legend is that 40 supply this is um 
just going to be a slow victory walk for Laser Cat. Yeah. Uh, Psy Storm's making disruptors, which is absolutely 100% the correct move. Mm -hmm. But he needs to land hella shots. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And it's going to be hard because Laser Cat has a basically pure Stalker army. Just a couple of Zells mixed in there, but we don't have any high value targets like Immortals or Archons uh, for the disruptors to kind of farm. So, um, yeah. And. Now it looks like we're going to have another committed attack from Laser Cat. Last time he did one of these, he kind of botched it, but this time there's no sentries to pick off, so Are maybe he won't. He's just dropping more DTs. He might never need to attack. He can just keep dropping DTs. <laughs> oh, he didn't get the pylon. Yeah, I mean, technically he could, but I think lack of fourth base um, is kind of indicative that he wants to attack, although maybe he just wants to play a little bit safe. Who knows? Dude. He got another pylon. Look at that. Thigh Storm is almost a ply block now. Because of these pylon losses. He's taking Thigh Storm <laughs> to Kirk Town. Yep. I mean, okay, no fourth base is actually. Like, he has to attack. He lost the Warp Prism, though. Okay, the Zealot found the proxy dark Darkstrike, by the way. The one that was scouting for Laser Cat's fourth <laughs> base. Or for Sassone's fourth base. It's gonna kill the pylon. I mean, yeah, I mean, fair enough. depowering the Dark Shrine is the no biggest W in the game, but it's another W. Yeah. Um, okay. Fourth base finally does go down when he sees the fourth base of Sidestorm. So I guess he doesn't want to take a fourth base and then get all in. But I don't know. I feel like uh, Laser Cat was in an amazing position before. He was at like 40 supply. All that was an army though. And uh, now he's kind of let Psystorm back into the game a little bit. Uh, he still does have uh, an upgrade lead. And he is looking to attack in a window where he can enjoy that upgrade lead. So let's see if he's able to get something done with this attack. I don't think he will, though, because there are four disruptors out here for Psystorm. Man, I was calling this game, but I didn't want to call it too early. Okay. I mean, good disruptor shot from Laser Cat. Um, but it's not over yet. I, I don't think it's over for Psystorm anymore. Well... I mean, no, it's not over for Psystorm anymore. I, I think Laser Cat just sat back way too long. Yeah. But it's still looking good for Laser Cat. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I mean, like I was mentioning, he's he's a good amount ahead in that plus three. Uh, he does. He is going to be able to get DT Blink sooner, which, as much of a meme as it sounds. DT Blink is a massive upgrade in this matchup. Yeah, you get six, seven DTs, and they can, they're they're your special forces basically. Like they can hit any yeah. targets you need them to. Yep. Very effectively, extreme prejudice. Yep. No, absolutely. A DTs, Blink DTs in this matchup are basically your number one way to deny economy. Uh, you get a couple of zealots, six, seven Blink DTs, and. There's almost no amount of stack defense that can defend that. <laughs> you need you need to have your own warpens. It's pretty insane. So, so, I mean, you look at this and you say, well, Psystorm's only lost like 600, 700 minerals more than Laser Cat, but 24 probes died. Those yeah. four pylons were warp gate bearing pylons. Like multiple warp cycles were missed due to those pylons being sniped. Um, yeah. There's been a lot of, like, oblique damage to Psystorm that has taken place throughout the game, and that hasn't happened at all to Laser Cat. Yeah, I mean, Laser Cat has basically just been able. He, he's, he's lost pretty much nothing at home. It's the Oracles did nothing. The, the DTs. Yeah. Yeah, the Oracles did nothing. The DTs did nothing on Laser Cat's side of the map, so. Yeah, he's been he's been untouched at home. Meanwhile, Psystorm has been taking absolute beating. 
And uh, that's gonna hold. That narrative is gonna hold true as the DTs and Zealots get shut down. Meanwhile, the uh, DTs in the main base of Psystorm are just going, going to work. Those stalkers had to actually micro because they were about to lose the fight to the DTs that they could see. Um, Invisible planet aliens, enough. man. Do it every yeah. time. So. Uh, we do need to mention the uh, giraffe in the room, which is the Colossus. Um, people in chat are calling it a mistake, but uh, I've actually seen both Laser Cat and Psystorm go for a later game Colossus in PvP. Although, in this game, I think it actually is a misclick because normally you want 4 plus Colossus, and then you just uh, zone out your army, your opponent's army, with a couple of Destructors while just picking up units for free with the range. Uh, so the single Colossus is probably not intentional, but we could see a transition at some point if we don't just go straight into carriers. Laser Cat with the Stalker hit squad on the right is going to tear through the static defense of Psystorm's third, but I don't know if he actually gets the Nexus. Psystorm should be- well, no, he pulled the probes through more Stalkers. Uh, Psystorm is going to hit Laser Cat's fifth. The Disruptor should stop Laser Cat from closing in from behind, and we might have a full-on base race on our hands. The DTs- oh my god, every Disruptor connection whiffs. Okay, okay, the final one finally picked off four of them, but there's still two left. There's no ops with that army. Yeah. There's only one OBS on the field. Where is it? Okay, it's deployed over the natural. Yeah, observers have been a massive problem for Psystar in this game, and once again we see a series of chaotic trades happening, and it's been pretty much going all in favor of Laser Cat. Actually, Psystorm lost 39 workers throughout all that. There's DTs yeah. in the main and the natural. Okay, that is insane. Psystorm has 32 probes. Laser Cat has 73. If Psystorm comes back from this position. What do you do? You you backed yourself into I, a corner there. What do you I, do? I don't know. It? I don't know if there's something that I can do that would be extreme enough to express my shock at that. Would you eat a this, shoe on stream? That is not I mean, I could. I would eat a shoe. I would eat multiple shoes. Okay, on you heard it guys. You heard it. Psystorm wins this game. Reality will eat multiple shoes on stream. I mean I have also, yeah, that has a no regret. <laughs> I have I have a pair of old running shoes. That's that's two. That is multiple shoes. I can do my best to try and eat them after sanitizing them and making sure that it's safe to put in my mouth. But I I don't believe in Sidestorm's position here. It's it's looking very dire. It's now three base to five. Thirty workers to seventy-three. Psystorm, the only thing he has in his favor right now is that is a lot of disruptors. Um, but yeah, so disruptors will soon become irrelevant as carriers are on the field. Right, and I and... think that's the one possible avenue of victory Psystorm has. Is there's a lot of money being thrown into carriers right now. They are unupgraded. Um, they are not all here to fight. If he takes an engagement with this army and somehow wins, the the actual numbers here aren't that different so yeah he, he could potentially roll over laser cat and at least take out an outlying base and maybe even things but he's got to do it now yep absolutely and uh with more carriers the more carriers that pop out the harder it'll be for side storm as we have Three carriers about halfway done yeah, in production. He, he's right on now. a timer. If those three carriers get out, it's Jeejers, but he he backs away. It's a mistake. It's yep. It's incorrect. And I think that that very anticlimactic, very small decision um, totally seals it in Laser Cat's favor. Yep. So what was a tumultuous game that should never have been as back and forth as it was? Uh, is actually going to end up going in favor of Laser Cat. So, oh, disruptors. Gonna get blinked away from. Okay, I mean, okay. Laser Cat is. He's respecting this army. He knows his position is really good. 
So he doesn't want to throw that away in a match that's so important to him. Uh, so I can respect the cautiousness. And uh, we do see the disruptors are scary. There's so many of them. Oh my god, and they're getting the most amazing shots. But it's not enough. We are up to seven carriers in the field. They have plus one. They have plus two on the way. They have shield upgrades. Sidestorm is fighting his heart out, but Laser Cat is just so strong. He's gotten his fourth up and running again. It's 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 not gonna be enough. Right. And yeah, oh, I mean at, at this point, yeah, he's yeah. just the disruptors are still getting pretty good shots, but the carriers are killing everything, and disruptors don't shoot up. Uh, so can't really can't really come back against those with just disruptors and a couple of stalkers. He's gonna blink forward, but there's not enough stalkers to quite one shot these carriers, and that's just huge. I mean, seven carriers out. If you don't have enough to one shot, you can't fight that. GG is called. Laser Cat advances to the playoffs where he will face Slayer probably. Uh, probably. So, we're doing a winner's, uh, winner's interview, right? Yep. Oh boy. We got Laser Cat in here. Um, so are we just going to message him on Discord, or? Yeah, I messaged him. Okay, cool. What's he listening to on Spotify? <laughs> oh, he doesn't have a public... Oh no, he's running. Oh, we got him. Hello. Hello. Hi. Congratulations, Laser Cat. Thank Big you. win. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in the Laser Cat PvP. Uh, but looking at your group today, I was expecting that the best result you could have had was second place. Just there's so many big swingers here. Um, so coming out first place in such dominating fashion. How does it feel, man? It feels pretty wild. Uh, to be honest, when group selections happened uh, the other weekend and I looked at my group, I was like, all right, I don't favor myself against any of these players. And I was, I was pretty certain I was going to be uh, 2 in sets. Uh, so I'm really surprised that I, I came out with uh, the the top top seed yeah uh absolutely stellar performance from you um going against daniello uh having had to prepare for him myself um uh, what was your mindset going into that series like he's such a versatile player and he's so mechanically strong but like how do you how do you mentally prepare yourself for something like that uh i've been working on Kind of how I deal with uh, aggressive players in PvP a lot recently. Um, I played a bunch of games with Cognite recently, and he uh, suggested that I try Sentry first. And I feel like ever since I made that switch, I feel so much more solid against aggressive plays. He wasn't super aggressive uh, besides game two, um, but I, I have a lot more confidence against players like that. Okay. Yeah. And it really showed. I mean, there were some games where it was just once it got to a certain stage in the game, you were just making smart decisions in them, and you were ahead for pretty much no reason. I mean, especially against Sidestorm in uh, game number two. 
uh, sorry, game number one. Um, at some point, he, or no, it was Daniello game three. Sorry, getting them all jumbled up. Too many PVPs. Uh, yeah, game number one against, or game three against Daniello, you were up like five or six probes for no reason. And then he attacked into you and you had more army. And it was just like, okay, you were just making better decisions the entire game. And uh, yeah, it's amazing to see. Um, you are playing against Slayer probably in the playoffs. Um, how do you feel going into that match? Well, uh, don't have a great record against him so far, but uh, I think, especially my PvP has been surprising me with the results that I've been getting recently. So I think that if it was a different month, uh, I would have a lot less confidence. But especially after uh, taking down the two in this group, I, I think that I. I've got a shot. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you made a, you made another fan today. I'm I'm definitely on the laser cut hype train. Um, I think you've got a great shot against Slayer. You just look amazing in the matchup. Um, congrats on making first place, Renegade. You got any questions? No, I'm good. I think you got everything covered. Okay. Good job, Laser. Yeah. Once again, congratulations. Uh, taking down your teammate, taking down the favorite for the tournament by some people's standards. And uh, yeah, absolutely well done. Yep. Enjoy, enjoy your victory. Go Sistrum. Yeah. <sighs> and with that out of the way, we will be starting Gypsy Danger versus Daniello in the losers match here somewhat shortly. Um, so we're going to do some shout outs and then I think take 15. Okay. And, uh, we'll get into our last two matches. So, guys, go check out the Platinum Heroes. Uh, make sure you head on over to the match where you know there's no more codes, but you can still follow Alpha X on Twitter or subscribe to them on YouTube, and they will give 20 cents to the prize pool. Um, we do have some stretch goals on there, so go ahead and take a look at those. Let me pull it up here. Why... There we go. I just compulsively, someone shamed me for not closing my tabs and I just compulsively close my tabs now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we have a split goal at $290. We're currently at $200.20. So if someone wants to close that gap, please feel free. We do have a fully funded tournament though. So thank you guys for that. Um, so many people put in the code. We had 90 people put in the code. 80 people, 80 people put in the code. Um, so that's really, really amazing. Thank yeah. you, everybody. We'll be right back.
What up? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> okay. We are back. We are ready for the next series. Are we doing Americans uh, EU. or EU? EU. Oh, EU. Yeah. Any in it's yeah, it's gonna be these three games are being all EU. EU players, so. Okay. They are ready. Everything looks like it is good to go. Okay. Is everything ready on the stream side of things? Okay. Alright guys. People are gonna start getting eliminated. It's time for the losers match. In yellow, taking on Gypsy Danger. Probably not the losers match people were expecting, uh, especially the EU stands in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is it. Everything's on the line for these two players. Certainly, Dan Yellow uh, would be quite upset if he goes out last place in this group. But it's looking like a reasonable outcome at this point. I mean, Gypsy Danger is an absolute beast in the matchup. We saw him put some really good games up against Psystorm. And uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be a bang of a match as we're starting on Blackburn, spawning in the bottom right-hand corner. Hailing from X-Alien in Poland, he is the yellow Protoss player, Denny. And in the bottom left, wearing the Lion of Genesis Gaming, it's Gypsy Danger as our purple Terran, so winner gets to live. Fight for our entertainment. Go, players, go. Uh. It's so harsh. <laughs> Dude, the losers, if... the losers match is so harshly named. It's like, you're both losers. Lost. We, we, we can also call it the uh, lower match instead. We can. Yeah. Just but that's like real subjective, deal. right? Like that depends on your yeah. perspective. They are lower than Psystorm and Laser Cap in this group. So. I mean, you could. You could put the lo losers match like on top when you're drawing your little diagram. There's nothing stopping you. Become You have to open your third eye. <laughs> yeah. It, what what um, is a winner's bracket? Where, but where someone gets eliminated upwards, right? Like, you're technically <laughs> eliminated from the group. It's just, you failed successfully. This sounds like a Fear Dragon idea. I may have stolen it from Fear Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I, I figured it out. Um, what is this scouting pattern, Denny? Okay, um, no, it's not a scouting it's a pattern. Scout. He's a no, proxy. <laughs> it's not at all. Okay. Yeah. All right. That is, he is not the player I would expect to be proxying in this match for the first game. But, well, uh, perhaps not feeling most confident in his macro skills today after that series against Laser Cat, and he's going to go for an aggressive start. Uh, he does have an expansion. Did he go 17 Nexus? No, right? I think so. He has Incredibus of Warp Gate. He has a second gateway, though. This is 17 Nexus. Okay. Taking a taking a leaf out of Psystorm's book, I suppose, or maybe he just also is a fan of the build. Either way, this is yeah. I mean, it it's worked very well Max against Max, for sure. Yeah, uh, this worked very well for Psystorm, but it was a little bit of a different opener from Gypsy Danger, which is which was kind of hard countered, I guess. But this is a still a factory expand opener. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's a, I think it's favorable for Denny, but it'll probably come down to if Gypsy Danger reacts. He's building a bunker, which is uncommon with Factory Expand openers. So perhaps he's sussed this out a little bit, and uh, I, I'm believing in the defense right now. I think it's going to come down to execution, but Gypsy Danger has a good chance to shut this down pretty well. Uh, 
tech lab on the starport. Tech lab on the factory. The attack is beginning. From Danny. The adapts are moving into place. Here's three more. I think it depends six adapts. a lot on where these initial uh, shots from the Hellions go. Oh man, the Reapers are moving out. Oh no. Oh boy. And, uh, okay. Okay, okay. Danny really doesn't like using shades to move his units into position. These <laughs> these extra three Reapers could have been here like a week ago. It's a good shade. The Hellions are gone. Yeah. So, uh, relatively fast tech lab on that factory, so you should be able to get that cyclone out reasonably quickly. The Reapers in the bunker are going to anchor the defense in the natural. Uh, but behind this, I mean, Denny's already in a great spot because Chips of Danger factory expanded. He is a little bit more behind economically than Terran normally would be at this stage in the game. Uh, so we can see that there's a 12 worker lead right now. But there is Banshees on the way, and Banshees are a really good counterplay against this build because as you can see, the tech for Denny is going to be very late. He is very heavy on minerals, 1,000 minerals in the bank right now uh, as he's kind of focusing on the micro here. And the, just the Rebel Bay, which is only finishing just now. So no blink to catch the Banshees, even if he will have an Observer. But it's more wrong, but I don't think there's going to be Cloak anyways. So this uh, this Robo is not going to be all too useful against this Banshee harassment. Yeah, I mean... It's, it sure feels like it takes an eternity for these Banshees to get onto the map. Um, there's Stalkers being warped in at home for Deny. Four of them on the field, so they can potentially deal with this Banshee play. We we don't see any Cloak. There's no Cloak for Gypsy Danger, so... Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I feel good about this from Denny. Uh, it's actually not even going to be a Banshee, Banshee Harassment. It's, it's just going to be an all-in. A... This is an all-in yeah. at this point, because he is, like, not replacing his SCVs very quickly, and he should pull the boys with this. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. There we go. And Denny That's... actually has no idea this is coming. He's taking a third base right now. He's adding a forge. He's building an observer. He has one shield battery going down to the third base, but, I mean, shield batteries are good. Don't get me wrong, but... This is a very, very rough position for Denny. I mean, he's in a great economic position, but nearly half the army supply. And uh, st pure stalkers without blink do not do well against marines and tanks and banshees. Battery overcharge even popped a little bit early there. This is looking yeah. very good for Gypsy Danger. What a waste of an overcharge. That's really bad. This is really yeah. bad. Oh, Scan even grabs the Observer. I mean, I don't know how impactful that is, but hey, it's nice. Nice pick off. He's going to go for the third base here. It's also where the Stalkers are, and Stalkers wisely not engaging here. Um, recall goes down. Okay. I like that play, but he's going to need a couple more good plays like that in order to have any chance to hold this push. And this is, yeah, I mean, he's pushing down this ramp into these tanks, and they are just shelling away. Immortal pops, but he's already lost most of the uh, bulk of his army. Those stalkers are being absolutely shredded by the tanks, and there's no energy left on that battery. There's no units left here for Denny, and Gypsy Danger looks like he's going to take game number one in a Gypsy Danger fashion. Well, he's running out of Marines. He is, um, but four tanks still alive, and the Banshees to kind of help get those last shots. Deny started charge. This is like, <laughs> uh, oh my god! Wait, 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 wait a second! Wait a second! No, deny holds. Dude, reality. Uh, there's... Deny holds. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm telling you, man. No, no, the Banshees. The Banshees are the gonna Banshees are the here, but there's a warp in. It's coming. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, no Marines left for that bunker that finishes, so... Yeah, that's something, but... At what cost? A lot. At 20, what cost? At, at, at a cost of 20 probes, right? So, yeah. Gypsy Danger 
ends up ahead, but it's it's miraculous that Denai is still alive right now. This is yeah, a Christmas miracle. Yeah. And uh, we were mentioning the Banshee Harass earlier. You could start Cloak right now, I mean. He could. It would be a late Cloak, but he could, and they'd just go into a macro game. The Stalker's gonna blink for that Banshee. They do trade two Stalkers for a Banshee and a tank, so... Yeah, three. Not bad. Not a bad trade. And uh, this blink does have a lot of utility. Uh, a lot of Gypsy Dangerous units are just kind of out stuck in limbo here on the map. So, if Denny is wanting to get aggressive, which it looks like he is, then he can actually kind of pick away at these, and without any stim and concussive shells just now starting, uh, this blink can generate some value, and the comeback oh. has already started here for Denny. Yeah, it's it's still a very uphill comeback. 7,000 minerals, 2,000 gas lost Yeah. for Denai. Like, literally double. Literally double the Terran. Um, yeah. It's... It's rough. He's just now getting a robo again. Oh, he, he did, did lose cancel a robo charge well. and have to restart it. So, yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough. Gypsy danger should on paper sail to victory, but I feel like we've had a couple upsets today. Yeah, uh, there's been some comebacks. There's been some crazy games, and Denny has made a has had a good past minute and a half of this game. I mean, he's he's made a lot of very very smart plays. Uh, Gypsy Danger realizing his head, wanting to scout that main, going ahead and giving a scan, making sure nothing comes, catches him off guard. Bit of a throw, I think. I, don't, I feel like it's almost never worth it to scan in this matchup, especially if you have these banshees that you could be easy to harass, but maybe it's just me. Um, but uh, yeah, Gypsy Danger's got his third orbital finishing up. Um, He's got stim, he's got combat shields on the way. He's got plus one on the way. He's making medevacs. And Denny is just going to be on pure gateway units uh, by the time this hits. And actually, this is a bit of an early move out. I mean, I can understand the, the TVP PTSD, but there's no medevacs, there's no stim. I mean, I, I think this still works out for him, though. Like, this is... Right. This is large. Absolutely. This is a large Terran army. Um, now, D Denai will have the high ground. Yeah. It's a big advantage. And Gypsy does not have a read on the gold base, so Denny can actually let his natural get sacked and still be in this game. It would be yeah. mass damage, but if, if push comes to shove, um, yep. just save the probes and let Gypsy yeah. take it. He's trading so well to start off, and there's a disruptor. It's going to make it impossible oh. for these tanks to get up this ramp. Well, Disruptor kind of whiffs. It grabs an SCB and a Marine. And now we have Stim. Now we have Medivacs. And suddenly this push is starting to look a lot more scary. Um, it was a good initial trade. The force field worked out really well. The Zealous tanking the uh, tank the probes. shots. But... Evac the probes. Evac the probes. Oh, you know, he's going to try and engage instead. And yeah, just not enough on the ground. Gypsy Danger. Got a little bit too much done with that uh, Hellion, or that, sorry. GG. Banshee and tank, yeah. GG. GG. Banshee tank attack, too strong. Uh, Gypsy Danger. Closes out game number one. A little bit closer than I feel like it, it, it could have been. Um, but in the end, it was, it was enough. So we move on to game two, and Denny. Certainly, a lot of people would have picked him as the favorite to win the group going into today, and now on the brink of defeat. Two K Atmospheres is map number two. Yeah, pretty neutral map, I think. I wouldn't favor either race over the other in this map. On one hand, it's long enough that Protoss would enjoy that in this matchup, but there's some really nice tank positions, so... Yeah, it's a moderate bases. distance from the Protoss natural to the Terran third, so yeah. I think it's, it's like, okay-ish. It's mid. Yeah, so... <clears throat> so we have, in the bottom left-hand corner of the map, um, 
hailing from Poland and representing X Alien. Down a map and he needs your energy if he wants to stay alive in this tournament. He is Denny. And in the top right as the purple Terran from Genesis Gaming, Gypsy Danger. Wouldn't it be weird if this was like the Genesis Cup or something? That'd be so strange. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would never happen, right? Never. It'd be so weird. Never. It doesn't roll off the tongue, we're in. Yeah. Um, Casted by Peely Peely. <laughs> Yeah, he did cast that one time. Mm -hmm. Was it? Yeah, his first one. But he didn't cast the one that I won. He only casted the EU. <laughs> Imagine like I'm a massive, EU. Yeah, I'm a massive Pilly Pilly simp, and he didn't even cast the tournament I won. Mega salt. So, Deny and Gypsy were both scouting. Roughly the same time. Yep. Uh, I, I doubt Deny is going to proxy anything this game. Yeah, I mean, the proxy actually worked out pretty well for him. It was just he had no info on the all-in, so... Um, yeah, got yeah. I, 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 I feel like, you know, with such short turnaround between games, you don't really have time to reflect on, like, what went wrong with your build. Some players can do that, um... But I feel like you just kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater a lot of the time, right? You're just like, ah, oh, that didn't work. Let's try something new. Um, yeah. And uh, and we're definitely seeing that here. Yeah, and and you're actually absolutely right. I mean, Denny is certainly a player who not only is, uh, I mean, he embraces diversity of his play. Like he, it's not just that he is willing to mix it up he just enjoys mixing it up that's what he finds enjoyable about the game as far as we can tell like uh so any opportunity he has to to change up his build order is one he will take he does not need any extra motivation to do so chips so. of danger on the other side of the field though going for another factory expand uh, similar opening, actually. Hellions and Reapers. Double gas. I, I mean, there's no way he does it. It has to be a mind game, right? He's going to open the same way. And then trick Danny into thinking it's null in while it's just a macro build. There's Gypsy no way he... is like our last hope at even a semi-reasonable faction distribution in a round <laughs> of eight. He yeah. loses... He loses this series, or the next one. It's gonna be six Protoss, a Zerg, and a Terran. That's it's a lot of Protoss. I, you know, it's I, I didn't, I didn't expect it to be like this in the in the championship because our race distribution started to get a lot better towards the end of the year. Like we had Fiant starting to just really show up, and up a tree, of course, Old Man's son, like. We had a bunch of non-Protoss players doing really well in Legion Cup. And then uh, Chocolate was another one. But then Fiat and Chocolate weren't playing in this. And then Old Man Slum uh, was not able to make it out of his group. Uh, we still had up a tree in Oil Town. But yeah, I mean, <sighs> Legion Cup and Protoss, name a better duo. Certainly, uh, certainly reflects well, we had the Maggie overall performance. Too. Yeah. So if he still had the game installed. The first, yeah. <laughs> if if Fiant were here, everyone dies, right? Like, it's just right. everything's on fire. There's anything he turns his gaze to disappears, just vaporizes it instantly. It would look like Man of Steel. Yeah. Um, but he's not. He's not here, so... It's endless waves of Protoss. Yep. More banshees and tanks. He's. He, I was saying I don't like him all ending again this game, but he's gonna do it. I, I is this prepared? Like, did he just look at Denny's play and be like, yeah, he hasn't. He does not have the correct response to this build. I'm gonna do it twice in a row, and we're gonna go on to the next match. Like, I feel like, I feel like that's Gypsy Danger's 
thought process right now because this build is very easy to hard counter. You just make Moils and Zealots. It's really, it's not hard. <laughs> Look at that. Denny is taking a third base as Gypsy Danger is moving out once again. Colossus on the way, but Denny has a lot more gates this time around. I'm, I'm believing a lot more in the defense this time around. Charge finishing so, so soon. Yeah. But so, so long from now. It's, it's not here. It's not here in time. Gypsy has a window. He does. Oh god. Oh, the broadside. Is he gonna get the stalker? No, he doesn't quite get the stalker, but severe damage. Is it gonna finish? Oh, he has charge in his wall. Yeah, oh my yeah, god. Yeah, the charge is in the wall. That's what I was saying. Like, it's, it's dead. Oh. It's dead. It's gone. There's no charge. GG. Gypsy oh. Danger wins. <laughs> oh, fuck. It was over so quickly. <laughs> I mean, uh, there could be god tier micro on the Colossus, but I mean, yeah. There's four Thing siege is, tanks out there. There's no way to close the gap with the siege tanks. I mean, he's okay. Baja this Colossus blast. attacking the siege tank that's really being repaired, thing. like yeah, no, it's not happening. There's two banshees. You can't shoot the banshees. Oh my god. GG. And I mean, just like that. Then he is out of the tournament. That's literally down to the choice of where he wanted to put that building. Yeah, absolutely. Building placement's important, folks. Yeah, I mean, he wanted to get that wall off for the Hellions, and at the same time, he wanted his Twilight to be down pretty fast. So he was like, yeah, I mean, this won't come back to bite me in the future, right? Right, guys? Wrong. Don't be ugly, Sonic. Be yeah. If you want to go exactly. fast, be, be pretty redone CGI. So. Yep. Place your Twilight Councils in a place where they can't be sieged by tanks. Exactly. Danielle is going to fight it out because this is his, he knows this is his tournament life yeah, on well, the line. This is the circuit life. This is the end of the yeah. circuit. Yeah, I mean, Danny can't play next, can't play next, next year, right? Right. So, yeah, I mean, this is it. Yeah, I'm marred out. Yeah, I'm marred out. This is this is the last hurrah of Denny for Legion Cup. Put your 07s in the chat. Pour out your Fs for respects. He's gonna be playing and... Dreamhack next to your crying. Remember, he was bound. Yeah, could be in Legion Cup right now. He's gonna play against you, Thermal, doing <laughs> this exact build. <laughs> just gets a war <laughs> flashback. And just runs away from the keyword. <laughs> Yep. So, yeah, I mean, there are five tanks in the main base of Denny. There's so not how, a lot how, left how to say about this. You are. So, <laughs> um, well, it's a lot better today. Last night it was raining really hard and I actually lost power for a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, you got the thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but everything's cleared up now and it's a, it's a pretty day that I will not be enjoying because it is humid as hell and Texas is not good for humidity. Very hot too. Gypsy Danger takes the series 2 to 0 and uh, we're moving on. Side Storm versus Gypsy Danger, the rematch. One last series remains. One final best of three in this group stage. If you guys want to see any of your favorite players, um, all the groups were casted on this channel this time around. So the VODs are auto-generated throughout all like the first ones on the list. Go ahead and check them out. It's like 16 hours of content, something like that. So feel free. We also got... Um, the S-Bot circuit that took place last year, or last year, took place last weekend. That was really, really solid bracket. Um, laser good unit. And the DreamHack qualifiers. Many, many, many of them have VODs on this channel. 
if you want to get caught up as North America and EU start to take, really get underway on the ESL mainstream. So also coming up next weekend, our, our big event is going to be me and Dave Testa on ESLC. Uh, we're actually going to be casting real DreamHack regionals. It's going to be so sick. It's confirmed. It's happening. I'm super stoked. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, what else? ESL Open Americas tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. And that's it. That's all the planned streams this week. So probably going to be doing some Immortal Gates of Pyre and Total War in the meantime. Like Gypsy is wanting break. <clears throat> you got five minutes just... to fill. Well, yeah. probably like three minutes now. Yeah. Slayers in the chat. Slayer round of eight? Question mark. <laughs> Peer pressure, peer pressure. Chris Laser Cat went out first. Acheron is also a believer. I don't know why Magnath keeps posting about Psystorm being the number one in AC. It's just factually untrue. <laughs> what makes you say that? Because I was the number one in AC. <laughs> I had the most points, even Let's though I didn't make that. I'll be the Snopes here, okay? We're Snopesing. Okay. Who's right, Reality or Magnus? Oh, wait, he passed me. Yeah, no, he How passed he pass me. Fake news, Reality. Fake news. Get what news checked. Get fact checked. What check. a snake. Man. Oh, I guess it was last chance. Yeah, he got second. He snaked me. Yeah, I, I checked it like until the last day of last chance. I just completely forgot that Psy Storm was really close to main point and that he was going to get 400 from that tournament. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Magnus knows his stuff. Imagine that. He's he's not going to let you live that down for like at least three oh, hours. No. He still brings up the one best of three that he can rush me in proxy three gate Robwood and then. And then beat me when he was diamond and I was slow masters. That was a good game, though. I mean, I, I didn't know how he played back then, and I was told by Kanak and Zeno that I was that I would walk over him. Like, oh yeah, dude, he's it'll be easy for you. <clears throat> Mostly because they were like, oh, he can counter rush, and you'll you have good counter rush defense. I didn't know. They didn't tell me that he was going to counter rush. So I just like. Played really dumb. I think I kind of rushed him as well on Blackburn and then didn't even click on his forge and assumed it was a gateway. But then three pylons went up behind that mineral line. Uh... This is it. This is the end. This is it.
Uh, okay. Looks like players are ready. <sighs> Rematch from the first series. Um, we didn't get to see a whole lot of what Gypsy the Angel can bring to the table. Um, I mean, he didn't do that build against Sidestorm, so maybe he just does it a third time in a row, and we learn that that Banshee tank is just an OP composition. Or he does it something different. In the bottom left from Cryptic, once again, it's Psystorm returning to the main stage. Reality. And he steps on it. Killing from Genesis Gaming. It is Gypsy Danger. Who do you think wins? Um, come right out and ask it. Who do you think wins? Well, there. Okay, so there is such thing as the rematch curse. So. By the rematch curse, Gypsy Danger should win. I but, agree. I think Gypsy's hit his stride. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, rematch curse actually hasn't been true this tournament. A lot of rematches have gone in favor of the person who originally won. So, um, and from what we saw from Gypsy Danger versus Denny, like that just seemed like Gypsy Danger realized that Denny had a poor response to that build mm -hmm. and just knew he was going to do it twice in a row and win like that that was pure confidence in that build versus that player specifically because we haven't we didn't see that versus Psystorm. so i'm still wondering if gypsy danger will be able to make the proper adjustments and take the series against Psystorm. but um my thoughts who's gonna win na supremacy Psystorm takes it okay well, EU Supremacy is gone. EU Supremacy already out the window. Yep. U Europe has been uh, struggling this tournament as a, as, a, in, as a continent. They even get their server most of the time. It's so sad. Yeah. No, it was crazy. I, even when I was playing in my group stage matches, mm -hmm. group stage one, I only beat the EU player. <laughs> I lost to the two NA ones, and then I only beat the EU player, and it was two to one. The game that he won was on NA, and I won the two on EU server. <laughs> right. So it's just the, the EU server is just not having a good time. It's such a weird experience playing with that much ping. It was for me at first, and then I just started playing all of my ladder games on EU. And suddenly it wasn't so bad. Sober guard, thank you for the follow. I'm not sure if you guard people from being not sober or if you you guard them from becoming sober. It's unclear. <laughs> or maybe he is a guard that is sober, and that's notable because other guards are not. We will ponder this. We will ponder. Um, Newling asking if this is the last match for these two. Um, well, it's not going to be the last match for the winner. I don't. I want to say that Size Storm is not over the boundary. Um, Wait, what do you mean? I don't think Size Storm has hit five three. And I, oh, I, I, I say think he means who's danger. being eliminated from today's bracket. Yeah, yeah. Oh. This is another elimination match. So this is the deciders. This is the winner of the losers bracket and the loser, the right, winner of the losers match, loser of the winners match, which is always a tongue twister to say. Yeah. Oh, for one of these guys. Okay. For some reason, I read that it's both of these. I was like, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, the elimination match, last one of the day. Um, okay, so another Phoenix opener from Psystorm. 
Worked out really well for him last series, but this time we don't have the Raven opener. Instead, uh, going for more defensive play. Uh, Cyclone, and uh, just going for a higher Marine count. Not really going for a Widow Mine drop, just sitting back and getting his 3-1-1 uh, going. Probably going to go for a big two base push with a late third behind it. It's on uh, one engineering bay, so that adds up. Holy Trinity of Terran upgrades. I need to, when I get my Elgato, I'm going to have like a Gregorian chant. Every time we see <sighs> these three. Yep. Yeah. Let's go. Phoenix play from Psy Storm. Like, what you going to do with it? It was real successful the first time. He used yeah. his phoenix. He's making a fifth phoenix. Even going towards the six. So, usually players kind of stop at around five, but Gypsy Danger is going to try Can and... get a tank? Why does he not like killing tanks? You guys tanks like have a tanks, lot of age. don't you? Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know, this... This isn't very much, and okay, well, okay, he loses a phoenix. He's gonna lose two That's phoenix. That's not great. All right, all right, he gets out barely. Yeah, the cyclone was a bit stuck behind the tank there, a bit unfortunate. But uh, he has a substantial worker lead. What does Cystorm have behind this? He's got nine zealots and five phoenix, and an adept. But he does have charge, and the zealots are gonna get on top before two of these tanks can siege. The phoenix has come in for the lifts. This is a cleanup. Yeah, I mean, there's no medivacs to even evacuate this bio, and uh, these phoenixes are just going to town. This is Picking devastation. Up the devastation. Absolute amazing hope. Looking good for Sidestorm. Hey, he has plus one armor, finished as well. Not a single so. probe died. Gator in chat providing us with the fun facts. They're not concerning whales this time, so a bit out of character for him. But he's saying that EU players have had losing win rates against NA ever since we changed the rules to favor EU players more. That's we made that change, of course, to just have consistency across events, uh, just so that the rules are more uh, transparent, easy to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, but what should have been a good change for EU has instead led to an absolute disaster for them across the board. Yeah, Classic no, they're EU. European, so, like, more straightforward rules confuse them. <laughs> they overthink it. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Except England, is... they Brexit in. <laughs> yeah, I was like, there, there's, a, there's a Brexit joke somewhere in here, but I, I don't have the political knowledge to, to make it. So... Yeah, I mean this is this is insanely good for Sidestorm. Picking off a widow mine, grabbing SCVs, he's gonna be, he's having an energy to lift. When the Phoenixes have no energy to lift something, that's how you know this is good for the Protoss. Wait, what because we have a glitch. What is happening? Dude, oh, one wait. of the doodads is floating. Is it happening on your screen? Yeah. Pan over to my camera. Why is that floating? Yeah. What happened? No, I am on your camera. This is I what in Oh, okay. well, Gypsy's pulled the boys. Okay. So, yep. uh, this is going to be, this is going to be a rough hold, but I think definitely doable for Size Storm. Yeah. Uh, Archon is the only real splash here. Like, well. Oh, there go the Phoenixes. There's no lift on this tank anymore. Ooh, oh my, my God. God. That could not have gone better for Gypsy Danger. And just like that, he is back in this game. He's still got uh, work to do, but it's looking good. Yeah, the Zealots around is going to be good. The Force Fields kind of work out okay for Gypsy Danger. Widow Mines grab the Archon with the next warp in the Zealots. Okay. I think this is going to okay. be enough well, of a hold. He went out. He went out in a flash of light for sure. Maybe got yes. a little overzealous there, but those were damn good Widow Mine hits. Holy Ooh. crap. He went out with some fireworks, for sure. Um, but now we're moving over to NA. Psystorm is up 1-0 to zero on his home server. 
can he close it out and make me look like a smart gamer who knows how to predict the group after the laser cat makes everything completely turn on its head. Uh, <laughs> we totally deserve like a game theory episode on why the EU players are losing. <laughs> Where he wraps it in with like five nights at Freddy's somehow. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's just not at all correct. That's the starter pack for like game theory, right? You have to be obnoxious about it. Not at all correct. Plug as much as you can for your other five YouTube channels. Yep. Tie it in with Five Nights at Freddy's. It's the key. That's this is the plot twist, is that game theory is gonna be the sponsor of next year's Legion Cup circuit. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, a server map is on Berlin. Imagine Legion Cup changing so much it starts with a G. Imagine. Couldn't happen. <laughs> Game Theory Cup, yeah. Yeah. Definitely not Genesis Gaming Cup. Not Genesis Gaming. This will not be Genesis Cup next season. That would just be weird. Totally. <laughs> the <clears throat> delayed chat reactions on the mine hits. We'd love to see that. Oh yeah, two minute delay is great. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Spawning in the top left hand corner of Berlingrad Ali, representing cryptic burgers, freedom, and everything good in this world. Looking to close out the last game of the day and make North Americans all over the world proud. He is Psystorm. And in the bottom right, it's Gypsy Danger as our purple Terran. Dude, why is it that America has like only good Protoss players, specifically the United States? Uh, probably Neeb's fault. I I think they talked about this on the Pylon show, and what they said is like, well, we don't have like the social safety nets that Canada or Europe does. In Protoss is like you can get good with it. Like you can't obviously it's the same amount of work to reach like the highest level from like high masters low GM, but you can get like pretty far with less effort with Protoss. Um okay. as far as like spending tons and tons and tons of time learning mechanics yeah. and whatnot. Like reaching six K with Protoss is easier than reaching six K with Eric. I, I think so, play. actually. Like, that yeah. little gap between... I mean, the statistics back you up. You look at EUGM. Yeah, look yeah. at Trigger. Look at what Trigger did, right? Look at what Neep right. did. Look at what um, Nina did. There's there's yeah. a clear pattern there. And it, it doesn't happen with Sir Terran. Future did not have that meteoric rise. Um, yeah, I mean... We, we've had a couple of NA Terrans pop up here and there. Cuddle Bear, Future, Vindicta. But uh, they all kind of hover around 6k. Uh, so, and we see them like Cuddle Bear is, like, he was semi-retired for a little bit. College, Vindicta is only now full-time. Future graduated high school and is now semi-pro. So, yeah. Certainly makes sense. Uh, the, the data backs it up. But Enough about Terrans and Protosses that are not Now time to talk about to... the Pro Terrans and Protoss. Right. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah, so Gypsy Danger going for Marauder Slow. And this is a proxy Marauder play. This is bold. He's a game away from being knocked out of this tournament. And uh, this is the route he chooses. Yeah, so he does have a second command center behind this, but he has 19 workers. He has been cutting SCVs for like a minute which is a really long time at this stage in the game. So the whole point of this build is he wants it to look as normal as possible, and then suddenly he just shows up with a bunch of bio units. The Marauder kill confirms on uh, on all the Protoss' gateway units, and then um, the Marines just kind of deal all the damage. So Psystorm suspects nothing. He has an Oracle, which could actually be really good, but there's no shield battery. 
And this is, okay. The really good reaction from Psystorm, but the Stalker is going to go down. The probes here are going to start dealing some damage from Marauders before the Marines get here, so that's good for Psystorm. They do get the surround with the with the mineral walk, but one of them is going to get out. The other one should go down? Okay. It does go down, but there's now a bunch of Marines here. They are going to be able to drive back this Oracle. He misclicks. Okay, he does get the SCV in the end, but takes a lot of damage in that Oracle. Void Ray is on the way, and Void Ray is actually a great way to hold this bush. It's a relatively low Marine count, so with a battery, he should be able to eventually pick away at those. And then the Marauders are just easy pickings, but... Nine probes already going down. This is not looking great. The mineral walk comes through. Oh, uh, trying to get the surround, but uh, there's no fighting units to back up these probes. And Sidestorm is down to 12 workers, but it looks like he is eventually going to hold. How many workers is he going to lose, though? Nine workers remaining. This has been a successful push for Gypsy Danger, I think it's safe to say. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, that said, it's 18 SCVs to 12 probes, right? It's not, it's not game ending. It's very close to game ending. It's not quite there. Psystorm is a very good player and can definitely bounce back from the situation. It's just gonna take a lot of work. Yeah, uh, Stim is actually finished. Yeah, um, he forces one out with the Void Ray. As long as he doesn't lose the Void Ray, this is actually good. It's free damage to these Marines. Stim expire. He forces another Stim. He does get the Void Ray, but these guys are very, very, very red. Yeah, if there was another Void Ray coming out, I would definitely believe. Oh, there's another Stalker. Okay. Yeah, these guys win the fight against the Bio if it actually happens. Yeah, and he wants it. I mean, he, yeah, okay, so he gets the Marauder. Good play by Gypsy. Size. Yeah. That's terrible. Oh my god. <laughs> He's oh witnessed two murders. Marine's head got blown off. Yeah. That'll give you PTSD. <laughs> Whoever made the death animations in this game didn't get paid enough. Whoever put in the floating effect. Yeah. The floating effects are amazing. Every didn't time we have an underwater map, so we get at least one or two clips of a Reaper just ascending. My top three effects are like... The um the space boxes, those are those are like top tier. Like I've never seen a better space box in another game. And yeah. uh seconds the water effect, thirds the kill animations. Okay. You mean like the floating dead bodies or the like actual water on the maps? The the floating dead bodies, the Okay. Yeah. So, th those are those are good. For sure. If you zoom the camera out, they like keep going too. They don't despawn until they actually yeah. go through the camera. Yep. The uh, the ESL observers have gotten very good at catching those. You always it's get so at least fun. one or two clips. It's yeah. so fun. It is. It's amazing. Uh, hey, Five Storms at a worker lead now. Uh, heck wise, he's in a terrible spot. Well. As, I mean, mules, though, right? So this is right. kind of even doubt. Um, but it's impressive that Size Storm is back in this position. The problem is he was able to even out the economy because Gypsy Danger, uh, you know, built a crap ton of units. And this is going to be a tough hold from Size Storm. Shield battery overcharge, yeah. good. Shield battery overcharge, not that good. Yeah, and that has been the story a couple of times today. Um, so... Yeah, I don't think he ha quite has the tech to hold off this push. Um, so, yeah, feels like this is going to be a stemming move kind of kind of ending. Um, gateways here are exposed. He's going to go and pick off those first as to not get choked out by the sentry, but sentry is just going to pop guardian shield anyways. Gypsy Danger wisely pulling back here, making sure to deny a third. It's possible to go down, but yeah, Side Storm can't afford a third right now. So, nothing to really worry about there. Charge is starting up, but I don't even think with charge that this would be holdable. So. This is gonna be a 1 1 series, it looks like. Yeah? Oh, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> yeah, val valiant effort from Psystorm to try and come back after a tough start, but 
It was a good builder decision from Gypsy Danger. And uh, going to game three. Is there ever a hope? Only a fool's hope. <laughs> Only a fool's hope indeed. And Europe server is pretty cursed. Um, so still believing in Psy Storm here, but really, really clever build from Gypsy Danger. Gator, Gator, don't try to EU explain, okay? You're not a part of the EU. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, go yeah. back to your island <laughs> see what's the final map they posted it in the Discord. PSF this is not print F commentating with me this is Alpha X's reality. Wait, who said that I would sound like printf? PSF. Unless he's saying that I sound like printf, but I don't think so. I don't think either of us sound like we're an app if I'm being honest. No. It's, it's a weird flex. <laughs> okay. New follower. Welcome to the stream, PSF. Yeah. No, this is this is I, I am not quite as good of a cannon rusher as, as printf, nor am I as smart. Uh, but it's the last game. This is this is the very last game. I, I feel like last... I've been casting these for a week now. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been, I, it's been three days, at least a weekend. Uh, you have been casting these. So, and of course, appreciate the coverage. We don't really have the tournament without the casters, yeah, so it's good to be back. As always, yeah. And uh, yeah, if you guys, I mean, we've had some of you guys showing up in the chat. New thing, you've been here, I think, every day. Um, so, looking forward to uh, once you get knocked out by <laughs> by the winner. No, okay. <laughs> Chicken Man Testa finished like an hour ago, I think. This is he's speed yeah. in that bracket. So. And we're, we're taking a little more chill, but yeah. Uh, new thing. Thanks for showing up. Everybody else as well. Just, I keep saying new thing every day, even when he's not playing. So, a passion god. Hope to see him as well supporting in the playoffs. Okay. Everybody's ready. <clears throat> Filler content is done. Mr. L with some excellent analysis. Psy Storm looks stronger in PvT, but Gypsy. Uh, perhaps could pull out a dank build for game three, in his words. I agree. I think I think Gypsy Danger has a lot of dank builds up his sleeve. And uh and <laughs> on match point there is no better time to pull out the dank builds. Spawning in the top right hand corner of Hardwire. Representing Cryptic Gaming, hailing from the United States of America and looking to secure his spots in the playoffs, put your hands together if you're rooting for Psystorm. And in the bottom left, it's the Genesis Gamer, Gypsy Danger. Both players fighting for their lives, so much money on the line, and a lot of pride and honor. This is the end of the circuit. It's uh, There's a lot of money, but this is more symbolic than anything. Um, dozens upon dozens maybe maybe over a hundred events that's actually it's probably not that far off right yeah um had like especially like it's weeks. it's definitely over a hundred if you count like associated events yeah um oh yeah to get here and we already see it saw one of those players who put the most time and effort in to get points yep. to qualify for this circuit championship, get knocked out. Psystorm is the leader in NA and is a game away from elimination. Yeah. This is like Christiana getting knocked out of the uh, OSC championships in the round of 16. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. It would be wild. And um, he, I mean, he's got the skills in this matchup. I'm still a believer, I'm holding strong. But uh, Gypsy Danger, as we saw, is he's got dank builds. Um, so 
it could honestly go either way. Uh, and yeah, just excited to see it play out. This is the first Reaper expand I think we've seen from Gypsy Danger, unironically. Side Storm is the one mix, uh, mixing it up. What? Yeah. Okay. Think this timeline. So this is Proxy Robo. Proxy Stargate. Right? No, proxy. No, it's Proxy Robo. Let's go. <laughs> How did you call that? He had 150 guys. It's the location. It's all about. It's okay. like real estate. It's location, location, location. Okay. Fair enough. You know. You oh would put it behind God. the because it was Stargate, I think. It's double Proxy Robo it's here to end it in. all. From the okay. leading North American player. Oh my God. Well, Gypsy is in danger. He chose the wrong game to Reaper expand. And, well, not the wrong game to do a three racks. Okay, so this is... Well, okay. So the thing about two Robos is that nothing out of the Robo shoots up. So right. actually the really strong play here oh, is having yeah, a viking to shoot the prism well a viking and then liberator right really, yeah really exactly um, but if so but the three backs also isn't bad because if Sidestorm messes up his micro which is possible nerves and he's not like 6k so always a chance then um then the sheer numbers can actually overwhelm the lack of aoe but with with really with perfect micro, Sidestorm never loses against this build order. So Gypsy Danger is gonna scout no tech. Uh, he does he know something is up? I don't think he does. If he did, he perhaps would have started another bunker. So this, oh, is this this Reaper is coming dangerously close? Okay, no, it turns around. Okay, this is actually gonna catch Gypsy Danger completely off guard. I think, I think this is really good for Sidestorm. Two Immortals in a Prism. They can do a lot. We've seen them in PvZ. We've seen them in PvP. And now we're gonna see them in PvT. Concussive Shells is about to finish and the Immortals are coming in? Okay. So it does finish. Shells does finish, but Stim is in danger. All the Marauders are gone. Okay. Lost a lot of HP on that Immortal. Both barriers did get popped. But... Oh, that was a bold no drop. Marauder. That was a bold drop. No barrier, no shield. Yeah. Half HP. Yeah, but Immortals have a lot of base armor. And... <clears throat> so... Uh, no Marauder? Okay. No, he wants stim too much. You gotta fight the bio. Size Storm's not being aggressive enough. Yeah. Backup units. I mean, he put all his money into these other two immortals, but like they took so much time to get on the field. It's it's a gamble. We're gonna see if it pays off. I actually don't know. I think it comes down to Prism Micro. I really do. Yeah, absolutely. And three more stalkers warped in. They walk forward a little bit of derpy there, but the Prism Micro is good so far. Gypsy Danger is gonna pull back to the bunker, but four immortals kind of don't give a damn about a bunker because their armor. Uh, and well, Royals do a lot against Armored, but kind of splitting his focus here. He is going to eventually burst down that bunker, and there's only two Marauders left. Looks like the micro was good enough. Sidestorm okay. is going to take this game, So I think. The game's not over, but it's it's getting there. It's well on its way. Here comes the SCV pool. This is a critical moment for Gypsy Danger. No, he doesn't have enough shooty bang bang units to kill the Protoss, and the SCVs are dead. Gypsy is going to fight to the last man. He will fight them on the ramp. He will fight them on the plateau. He will fight them in the mineral line. But, but he will not defeat them. Unlike the Germans, I think. <laughs> I think Britain's dead in this case. Um, <laughs> Psystorm yep. about to claim his place in the round of eight. Unless, unless like, Magnet comes in with a steel chair or something. I don't know. I don't know how yeah. he gets out of this corner. There's the last SCV pool. GG is called. Psystorm is your final player to move on to the round of eight. He's going to be facing Newling. Yeah. Completes his six Protoss gauntlet. The round of eight. This is so sad. 
It's going to be there. Well, there's a lot more PVP ahead, guys. So if you enjoyed these four groups, uh, stay tuned for the round of eight, which is going to take place next weekend. We still haven't figured out when or who is going to be casting that. But now that we have all the players, we can set times. Um, and then the following weekend is going to be semifinals and the grand final. So if you guys enjoyed uh this my co-caster here today has been reality reality thanks for coming out Before we close the stream we do have a, a winner's interview we do have a winner's interview but yeah. first let's shout out the platinum heroes make sure you yep. go ahead and check out their discord server um check out their merch i'll flash it here on screen that was the wrong asset there we go um and check out the Maturino. Still time to contribute. Still two weeks to contribute, as a matter of fact. Let's get on to this interview. Congratulations, Sidestone. Thank you. Uh, reaching the round of eight. Um, kind of a tough group, I felt like. But uh, we managed to close it out in the end. Uh, so going into this group, I think nobody really expected for the first place person to be who it was. Um, uh, what were your thoughts going now? in? I mean, you obviously you knew you were going to play Gyps Danger, you're strong in PvT. Who did you think you were going to face second? Uh, I thought it was, you know, going in, I thought I, ha I had to beat uh, Gypsy or Deny. One, mm -hmm. I had to beat both of them in order to, you know, advance. So that was kind of my thought there. But uh, thankfully, uh, my teammate Lasercat, he's been grinding up on the PvP. And he's... Uh, he, did it pretty good on his match, so I didn't actually have to play deny, so that was pretty good. Um, yeah, so that was my thoughts going in, kind of, yeah. but uh, definitely, definitely did give me uh, quite the surprise when Laser Cat won his first match, and then I thought, you know, yeah, pretty easy. I played Laser Cat before, and it should be a cakewalk for me, but uh, no, his PvP is uh, very strong. Shout out to him there, but uh, glad I was able to uh, make it out despite yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, and Laser Cat, I mean, amazing PvP, but um, to give you some credit, like, your PvT games looked amazing today and really impressed uh, with how you played against Gypsy Danger. They were both 2-1s, but um, you certainly felt like you were in more, more in control during the series, um, and <clears throat> Gypsy Danger is no slouch when it comes to the matchup, so... Massive props to you, winning both of your games in that last series on the EU server. Uh, so crossover ping. But <clears throat> uh, going into the round of eight, you're going to be facing Newling, the PvP. Um, what are your thoughts on that uh, player, that matchup? How, I mean, how are you feeling about your chances? Um, I have never played against him before. So I'll have to uh, study up some replays, get some of that, get some of that going. But as to PvP in general, I do feel... Pretty confident in the game in general. I have a, a, a good amount of builds in my repertoire. Um, I, I do feel confident in the matchup. Uh, it's just that um, the, the the thing with PvP is that uh, playstyle playstyle is very important. So I do definitely do feel more confident against players that I've played before. So he's someone new. So I definitely have to be watch out for any unique playstyles that he brings. Well, we're definitely looking forward to it next week. Uh... He definitely has some unique play styles. I'm excited for that series. I think it's going to be a, there's going to be some fireworks. So um, one last question for you. Uh, you've had a dominating year in the NA side of things, winning two back-to-back -back, uh, regionals and uh, still making it to second place in the uh, season finals for last chance. So um, you finished first in the seedings for NA. Uh, you've made it out of your group. Uh, a brutal group stage, which a lot of favorites did not make it out of. Um, who do you think is most likely to win this tournament? Well, well, if I say anything other than myself, that's not just not, you know, not confident behavior. So, <laughs> okay. all right. But, hey. no, but uh, in general, so just so to add on to the question, I guess that's sort of a follow up. Um, most of these players in the round of eight, I've. Uh, you know, it's, it's a mixed bag, really. Some of them no, I've never played. Some of them I've played and uh, beat before. And some of them I've uh, played and lost to before. So it's, it's going to be a tough uh, round of eight. Okay. Yeah. So you're putting yourself out there. Going to win the tournament. All right. You know, I, 
I'm a big laser cat believer right now, but uh, I do like the confidence I'm seeing from you. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see how you perform and um, good luck out there. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Renegade, do you have any questions? Yeah, so who do you want to face in the round of four and who do you want to face in the round of... Uh, or, who do I want to face in the round of four? So I'm, so I'm looking at the bracket. Is uh, mm-hmm. Archeong or Oil Town? Um, no strong preference, really. But I guess... Uh, on the one hand, on the one hand, PvP. I've been playing a lot of PvP. Definitely more confident in that matchup. Uh, but again, uh, Oil Town also no slouch either. So, if I had to give a present, I'd say play more PvP. Play okay. more PvP. Unafraid of the beast of PvP. I like to see it. All right. Thank you for the interview. Uh, thanks for coming out to the games. Put out a great performance, and uh, we'll see you in the round of eight. All right. See you too. See ya. Bye. Later. Okay, that was Psy Storm. This has been Renegade and Reality. Um, I might stream another game later. I don't think I have the energy for ladder tonight, but uh, yeah, I'll see you guys then. Show some love to whoever we end up raiding. GG's, everybody. Follow the channel if you enjoyed the stream. I'll catch you later. Bye bye. Okay, are we muted? Stream.